scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. We neglect wisdom so much. We neglect wisdom so much. And then we run around chasing for the things that only wisdom can give. We waste our time in things that are minors. Things that will come to us naturally if we invest in wisdom. One more time pray and say, Lord, I choose wisdom. I use my mouth and I use my life. I am tired of foolish decisions. I'm tired of the level that I am and from the depths of my heart I covet the wisdom of the spirit not human wisdom not intellectual wisdom that comes to naught I crave I cry I express desperation for that wisdom that made kings out of ordinary men That wisdom that made champions out of shepherds. That wisdom that made warriors out of weak women. I covet your wisdom. I covet your wisdom. It is life to me. I covet your wisdom. I express it as a matter of life and death. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice not by strength by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor they that seek me early find me hallelujah Lord, as a family of faith, we submit our desperation before you. We need wisdom. We need wisdom. Distinguish us through wisdom, O oh God. We need wisdom. We crave for it. Thank you for the things that you have done in us and through us at this level. But, O oh God, we cry for wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus, grant us wisdom tonight. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Please greet one another. Hallelujah. Again, we'll never cease to honor and appreciate great men and women of God in this place. Please let's celebrate Prof. Thank you, sir, for taking out the time. Celebrate Pastor Williams in a long time. Hallelujah. Please celebrate Shadi's husband, Mr. Ojele. He's a wonderful wife. Thank you, sir. And Pastor Pete Rock's wife is here, my friend and brother. Celebrate him and celebrate her. You will be somebody's wife, ladies. Celebrate her. Thank you. Hallelujah. Everybody say wisdom is the principal thing. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. That means when you get wisdom, it will make you a principality. Oh, I love the wisdom of God. See, brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Look up, look up. 
if you pay the price you see wisdom is so powerful you don't need to give somebody to keep it for you and then you collect it it's not subject to the wickedness of another person you don't need to refrigerate it you don't need to warm it huh you don't need to save it in a bank it has equal value in every nation hallelujah you don't need to keep it in a safe and then be afraid if a thief will come and pick it when you have it you have gotten it it's as simple as that there are things see the apostle said such as i have a man can know that he has something it's not guesswork you can know that you have something hallelujah and i have come to cherish the wisdom of god wisdom of god will make you do things that will cause men to wonder they said what wisdom is this may that be someone's testimony that a generation will look at you and say what wisdom is this i cannot believe that with the kind of background you had or with the kind of past you had you are still surpassing standards hallelujah thank you jesus christ tonight please even if you've never paid attention in anything that i've been teaching this is one of the nights where I believe God will alter someone's destiny radically. Hallelujah. Radically. What you do not know can destroy you. Are you listening to me? What you do not know, brothers and sisters, in this realm, ignorance is not an excuse. What you do not know can destroy you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Help us. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to thee, O we rejoice we rejoice for Emmanuel has come to us oh we Lord, you are in the midst of your people and we salute your excellency. You have come to make us like you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are taking on the subject of extraordinary success tonight. The Lord puts this so strong in my heart. I'm so excited because this is one of those days that you will walk out of this place rejoicing knowing that your life has become predictable hallelujah praise the lord i'm like a bee my life is a product of many many anointings i have glean from the wisdom of many men my father called me some years ago and he said you're a young man with gray hair 
wisdom can add to your status in life wisdom can make a boy called joash at age eight to become the king of an entire nation wisdom can make a feeble person called david to defeat a roaring enemy called goliath i cherish the wisdom of god i cherish the wisdom of the spirit sometimes when i sit down i just begin to weep and i salute the spirit of god for the ministry of all the men and the women of god who have poured in and invested in my life some of them may never know the impact that they have made in my life but i'm so grateful thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit in your work on earth is done thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit in your work on earth is done. the holy spirit has moved through great and mighty men and women and has opened them to different dimensions of grace in the kingdom and we remain indebted hallelujah this teaching tonight is very dear to my heart and i hope that we will receive it and may it change us in the name of jesus the first thing i want to talk about tonight is just to challenge us on our responsibilities as far as success is concerned the topic is extraordinary success as far as being successful in life is concerned please listen to me you have a role to play everyone say i have a role to play when it comes to the success equation i want you to know that god has a part to play but you also have a part to play please get this it is not all up to god and it is not all up to you we have two extremes in the body of christ when it comes to the issue of success there are others who believe success is purely based on intellectualism and hard work and all of that and they neglect the place of god to their detriment and they find out that they never become successful and then there are others especially those who are spiritual and they love god and they believe that because they are spiritual and they love God and they experience his presence success should just occur automatically both people are in error there is an imbalance are you getting my point when it comes to the kingdom you have a role to play and God has a role to play it is your playing of your role and God playing his role that makes your success extraordinary that makes your success guaranteed praise the lord it's important for you to know this i always say this when i'm teaching on success that it is dangerous and oftentimes destructive to try to share truths with people when they do not see the need to receive it are you getting my point it is very dangerous listen let me tell you something when god started out with me i was so excited at the depths of truth and insight that god was giving me and i made a big mistake and i don't want you to make that mistake and the mistake that i made was that i assumed everybody had my kind of passion are you getting my point 
So every revelation God shared with me, I was just looking for just every and anybody to share it with. And I saw the way that certain revelations came to me as precious pearls. And I carried it and gave people and they dropped it on the floor and matched it. They trivialized the depth of the dealings with the spirit. Never waste your time trying to give information to people who have not seen the need to receive it. Please get this. God is giving us wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, They that seek me will find me. You must communicate your desire and your desperation for God. It says you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. It's a law in the spirit. Never waste your time trying to invest your time, your energy, your resources in people who have not communicated a desire to receive it and don't feel guilty about it. There are many parents who spend money trying to pay the school fees of people who are just not interested. Have you seen people like that? You pay money for lesson and you come and find the person just gisting around or playing computer games. Do not waste your time and your resources on people. Make sure you probe the sincerity of their willingness to receive. Is someone learning something this night? I used to feel so guilty because I felt if God gives you something, you should lavishly give it. And you know, I became an enemy to many people because I was forcing them to try to get these principles. And I just found out that some people are just not interested. Are you getting my point? So learn it tonight. Treasure the informations that you receive from the Spirit treasure your sacrifices don't trivialize your sacrifices you may pick up this message right now as a gift and give someone and the person tells you please i'm busy i'm expecting a call somewhere he's expecting a call that will lead him to make a foolish decision whereas there is wisdom that will save him are, are you getting what i'm saying You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star. very important you have a role to play and god has a part to play that's what many of our fathers of faith call covenant i like to use the word partnership for it that it takes you please never forget this never forget this your success is not all up to god and it's not all up to you you have a part to play and God has a part to play. And as far as God is concerned, He is more than faithful. You can trust Him to play His part. That means the, the, the problem in the equation of success is not trying to coerce God to play His own part. It's to make sure that we understand what our roles and responsibilities are. Are you getting my point? I promised that I was going to touch on something two weeks ago. Let me just touch on it very briefly. The gospel of salvation and the gospel of the kingdom. There is a difference. They are both gospels. But I need you to understand something. The gospel of salvation is the gospel that reveals to you the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. It lets you know that Christ came and he paid with his blood. As an atonement for your sins. And that if by faith. You accept the free gift. The sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. The shedding of his blood. His death and his resurrection. That if by faith you open up your heart. At once. Eternal life becomes yours as a gift. Are you getting my point now? So under the gospel of salvation. You do not do anything. 
any man that tries to tell you that you do things in order to inherit salvation or to receive eternal life that's not true the bible says we are saved by grace and that not of works hallelujah lest any man should boast but then the problem is many people camp around the gospel of salvation the gospel of salvation is only an entrance it should open you up to other realities in the kingdom are you getting my point now and then you come into the revelation of the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom reveals jesus as king not savior again and it reveals you not just as a child but as an ambassador it is the gospel of the kingdom that opens you up not just to your rights and privileges but to your responsibilities hallelujah the gospel of the kingdom helps you to understand that god did not just save you to sit down moving around and every time there's trouble you just say jesus you died for me i belong to you if you like don't save me and then we don't do anything so we throw all of the responsibility to jesus christ and we just say just sit down and enjoy yourself and let life work for you unfortunately that's not true it sounds so true brothers and sisters it sounds so spiritual but it's not the truth it's not an accurate interpretation of the thoughts of god there is the gospel of the kingdom and in the gospel of the kingdom god finds a man god empowers that man and god begins to reveal to that man that he god has a need that we were saved unto good works we were not saved by works but we were saved unto good works not unto laziness so you understand that there is a responsibility in the kingdom hallelujah it's very important for us to understand this when it comes to success it depends on you hallelujah so let's look at the concept of success very quickly um by the way let me celebrate two people um you have the photos media hallelujah i must appreciate these two great men of god they have shaped and molded my life i salute and i honor them in their absence or in their presence i'm not embarrassed they have mentored and built me they have imparted wisdom i cried for wisdom they are true apostles of wisdom lots of people make noise but see wisdom has fruits are you getting my point anyone can claim to be wise but there are fruits of wisdom and i honor these great servants of god the first of them is bishop david oyedeko i honor him in my life i salute him as an apostle of wisdom <laughs> hallelujah i honor him and i appreciate god for the depth of wisdom and the depth of insight different people say all kinds of nonsense wherever i sit down and i hear you say anything wrong against him i will get up and walk out of there i don't care who you are and what you are saying i don't care what your thoughts are and what your perspectives are I salute these great men of God. Koinonia, help me. Let's celebrate grace. 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 Hallelujah. I also celebrate a true apostle of wisdom, Dr. Mike Mudok. Oh, what a mentor, what a mentor, what a mentor. I honor him in his absence. I honor him in his presence. I honor his grace. I honor him with my life. I honor the investment of the spirit upon his life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit down. God bless you. Let's get into the teaching very quickly. There is what you must know. To take you from where you are now to where God wants you to be. 
Hallelujah. Number one, let's examine the concept of success. What does it mean to be successful? I'll have to run. There is a lot to talk about tonight. What does it mean to be successful? Success means obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal. Please write it. Very important. This is a school tonight. Success is obtaining or achieving or accomplishing a worthwhile goal. If you don't have anything to write, use the notepad on your phone. Please write something. Write something. This is a school. Hallelujah. Place value on knowledge. Place value on information. In heaven, when the apostle was in heaven, he said, write, write. Don't just hear, write. Because there is only so much your mind can take. Hallelujah. So what is success? Obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal. One of the things that I've seen in my life and I've seen across different territories especially in the continent of africa and even in nigeria is that there are many sincere please listen many well-meaning christians who may remain failures for the rest of their lives please listen we're going to examine something very powerful tonight why is it that many christians are failures so many believers, so many tongue-talking Christians, prayer warriors, sincere Christians that have character, men who love God, very, very sincere people, honest, well-meaning believers, but they never get to accomplish or achieve anything they never get to transform a generation they never get to rise beyond the limitations that they found themselves in why is this so hallelujah and i got to understand something very important and very powerful jeremiah 9 verse 24 i was asking the lord this question and then one day the lord showed me a scripture that blew my mind and then i heard one of these men of God sharing this thing again, again and again. The first person I had talking about this was Dr. Mike Mudok. And then I had Olumide Emmanuel again talking about it. Please look up. Jeremiah 9 verse 24. But let him that glory had glory in this, that he what? Understand it and know it me. Hold on. Why will the Bible use? I hope you understand that. The, 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 the construction of scripture is very, very, very detailed and very intentional. He said, let him glory that he knows me and then that he understands me. Not just that he knows me alone. Not just that he understands me. And I said, ah, that's the point. There is a difference between knowing God and understanding God are you getting my point now the knowledge of God is what we call in koinonia intimacy you understand you you know his presence you can sense his presence you're seeing transformations happening in your life the anointing of the spirit of God is being felt strong upon your life that's as a result of the knowledge of God but when it comes to your success in life you must understand the ways of God the Bible says he showed his acts to the nation of Israel. But unto Moses he showed his ways. His principles. The inner workings that produce those results that are seen. So it's not enough to know God. You must understand the principles of the kingdom. And one of my obsessions is to open the body of Christ to understand the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mike Murdoch puts it this way. He says there are two dimensions to the knowledge of God. There is the person of Jesus Christ and there are the principles of Jesus Christ. The person of Jesus Christ secures you for eternity. The person of Jesus Christ secures your peace. But the principles of Jesus Christ secure your success here and now. 
are, are you getting the difference now very very profound and very important the principles of jesus so all of the people who we consider to be successful and are not believers have embraced the principles of jesus but they rejected his person they will never accept that these truths that they are working with that is producing this success has come from god they will never give him the glory they will never acknowledge him as the lord of their life but they they change the names of these principles but you know that these are kingdom principles at work but then we have on the other hand the church we love god we know everything about god we know all the names of god from genesis to revelation but we have rejected the principles of jesus so we have pastors we have leaders we have all kinds of people who never get to make any kingdom impact in their lifetime but tonight god is separating us through wisdom in the name of jesus christ there are laws and principles that must be understood and obeyed in order to be successful in this kingdom please write it down there are laws and principles that must first be understood and then obey in order for you to achieve true success has nothing to do with age has nothing to do with gender hallelujah it's not about age it's not about your advantage or your disadvantage jesus was born in nazareth and apparently the nazarenes had a testimony that they were failures can anything good come out of nazareth but the best gift came out of nazareth are you following me now so when it comes to success please and please deliver yourself from this lock mentality a lot of people just believe we have been taught by well-meaning pastors well-meaning preachers that whoever god wants to bless he will bless whoever god does not want to bless have you heard that please be delivered this night in the name of jesus christ it's impossible listen when you understand the laws of the kingdom you will know why god is love and you will know why god is just righteousness and justice the bible says are the foundations of his throne joshua chapter 1 verse 8 the ultimate equation for kingdom success many of us read it we just recite it but there is a powerful revelation joshua chapter 1 verse 8 there are laws there are principles that must be understood and must be obeyed in order to be successful listen let me tell you something please look up there are many people who hear what i'm saying right now and just make up their mind and say no forget it it's just nonsense we have seen people who don't know anything and god just bless them have you heard preachers like that i wasn't doing anything i was just sitting down and a blessing what is your concept of a blessing We are talking about socks. I mean sustained success that can be imparted to generations. And I'm not talking of money or finance necessarily. Hallelujah. Doing big things for the kingdom. Accomplishing much for his majesty. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book that contains laws. The laws of the kingdom. Many times when we hear law, we are just thinking law of old testament no 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 the laws of the kingdom were there before genesis 1 are you getting my point the laws of the kingdom are not the laws of the old testament no they have been there from the foundations of the earth they are the very principles that heaven is governed by shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that means do it consistently that thou mayest observe to what it's not enough to confess it's not enough to meditate there is a doing according to how many all not 90 percent the equation of success is so strict 
that 90% is still F. For then, after you have done this, not during, not before, please help me read that last, that, that last, uh, the, the, the last clause there, for then. Are you ready? One to read. For then, thou shalt make and thou shalt have who will make his way he said you will make your way prosperous that means it is your responsibility if you want to remain at the level you are now are you getting my point now we keep blaming god on things that god has no business one of the things that i have learned in my life is the ability to accept responsibility it's so easy to blame our parents for the way we are right now right many young people we stand and have the gods and the effrontery to insult them and we say our parents they were careless they were this but look at how old you are now you've even forgotten that you are now 35 years doing the exact same thing you were complaining right from when you were 18 and you are still making you are making worse decisions because you are exposed to more opportunities and information many of us like to talk about the government you know people say the money in nigeria how can one person loot 170 million they would have shared it to all of us can i tell you something look up share the money in nigeria equally to everybody i give you 24 hours it will return back to the people that had it initially guaranteed <laughs> guaranteed for then shall thou make your ways what prosperous and you will have good success may god give us good success there is a difference between good success and bad success Good success is the kind of success that exalts the name of Christ, keeps you in integrity, and you can, when you kill a man to be rich, that's bad success. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you sleep around for money, that's bad success. When you give bribes and tips in your office for promotion, that's bad success. The success of many people in Nigeria has a cost upon it because it is bad success. Hallelujah let's continue very very important i want us to examine certain things very very quickly um let's look at jeremiah 6 verse 16. one other thing i want you to realize about success is that success is not coincidence success is not magic success is not luck there's no such thing as that a man said if you wake up and find yourself successful be sure you were not sleeping thus saith the lord stand in the ways and see and do what ask everybody say ask everybody say inquire everybody say pursue ask for the what that means those parts are already there you don't need to invent it you don't need to discover a road i mean to try to invent a road that has been found he said ask for the ancient path where is the good way it's only the good way that can give you good success is that true and he said and walk therein you can ask and they can show you and you can sit down and still be looking he said when you find it walk therein what's the result he said you shall find rest for your souls but what is the church saying but they said we will not walk is that not the testimony of many people we will not walk one day god will bless us god is see me praying you wait and see and we keep waiting and waiting and waiting hallelujah i come from a lineage of missionaries my grandfather they were the founding fathers and the trustees of the church of christ in nigeria you go to the history and you are checking you will see my mother when they were all small sitting there in the picture and my father too that my, my grandfather hallelujah 
my blood father was a baptist served god diligently with his life brothers and sisters if if there is any couple that i've seen in my life who are men of character and integrity that truly love god i can tell you my parents it, but it did not change the situation in my family are you getting what i'm saying I knew times when my mother would lock the door, you would hear her shouting and crying and praying. And at a point I said, Kai God, but you self now. Wow. Ah, somebody is crying like this to you. What you do not know can destroy you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I'm going to share with us a few principles. Before I go there, let me just say something quickly. The difference between failure and success is the voice that you have chosen to trust. I must say this before we continue. The difference between your success in life or your failure is the voice that you have chosen to trust. It's not enough to just listen. The Bible said, be careful how you hear. You can hear a wrong voice and believe that voice for years to your detriment. The difference, I can never help you to become successful until I change the wrong voice you are listening to. Adam and Eve kept hearing the voice of God and as long as they had the voice of God and walked in his ways, they were successful. The day they had what? Another voice. Is that true? Lucifer came with another voice and he misled them. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, it said, And they heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where art thou? Hallelujah. And Adam, uh, that's three of, chapter 3 or 4. And he says, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. What did God say? Who told you? That means you started hearing another voice. Your success in life, listen please is highly dependent on the voice you have chosen to trust not just here our decisions in life are based on the convictions that words have brought for us if i convince you right now that if you come and kneel down on this altar you will get breakthrough will you be embarrassed doing it you will just come and kneel down is that not true if i convince you right now that if you slap lawrence your breakthrough will come guaranteed. As stupid as it sounds, you will find out that there are people who will come. Passionately, they say, oh, Lawrence, it's not like I'm a wicked person, but I need to. The whole body of Christ is moving at the frequency of convictions and words. And the Bible says, there is, as it were, many voices, and none of these voices are without effect that means the voice you permit to speak to you is the voice that molds your success unfortunately many of us in the body of christ have received not necessarily wrong voices but inaccurate voices not necessarily wrong but that the equations they have given us were not complete so we grew up with convictions that are not thorough not potent enough to deliver unto us the things that are required and that's why god is helping someone tonight i can never change your life until you are willing to change the voice the convictions that you have trusted and kept hmm. hallelujah i'm going to teach on three basic principles number one very important i'm not going to talk too deep in it number one if you want to be successful please listen we're going to talk about the principle of mentorship listen this has become such a controversial issue i have a series just for this and i trust that when god grants grace we're going to deal with it it's, it's been such a controversial issue in the body of christ there have been all kinds of imbalances about the concept of mentorship many people in their innocence have been misled into all kinds of junks have been threatened by all kinds of wrong ideologies 
but let me tell you a few things about mentorship very important first samuel 3 verse 12 to 13 please help us media we need to be very fast mentorship is a very important aspect of our lives there are two ways to learn in life number one mistakes number two mentors there are two ways to learn in life you learn through your mistakes or you learn through your mentors hallelujah mentorship is very very important please pay attention to what i'm sharing tonight if you ever are interested in success in the kingdom 3 verse 12 and 13 3 verse 12 and 13 first samuel 3 verse 12 and 13 thank you holy spirit is somebody getting blessed tonight hallelujah all right let's read together one to read and in that day i will perform against eli all things which i have spoken concerning his house when i begin i will also make an end verse 13 why he said for i have told him that i will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not and he restrained them not there are two ways to learn in life mistakes and the ministry of mentors is so so important second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 very powerful scripture please if you listen to what i'm sharing just three laws that i share tonight it will dramatically change your life second timothy 2 verse 2 everyone please read one to read of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to what teach others also so what i had i commit to faithful men and those faithful men teach and commit others this is how the chain of success works in the kingdom a mentor is not just one you submit to and admire that's what a lot of people do in the body of christ and they call mentorship so wrong a mentor is not just one that you submit to it's not just one that you admire a mentor is not just a man who instructs you a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey not whose instructions you hear not whose instructions you discuss not whose instructions you pray about are you seeing the nonsense that are done in the body of christ all in the name of mentorship and many people never get blessed you do not see the signature of what they attempt to be representing hallelujah a mentor is not just a person you submit to it's not just a person you admire oh i admire this person and that means the person is your mentor impossible a mentor is not even the person you sit under it's not just the person you hear a mentor is one whose voice you have come to trust as the voice of god in your life this is very very dangerous if you understand it you won't just get into all this flamboyancy that people do in the name of mentorship and confuse themselves into perdition a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you follow and obey a mentor is not one whose instructions you discuss please get this get this get this this is a powerful um principle about mentorship a mentor is not one who talks to you and you say okay i've had you let me go and pray about it you've had people say all those kinds of junks they say i need to go and pray and confirm you do not trust his voice there is no man in scripture who truly listened to the instruction of a mentor and missed it it's impossible from genesis to revelation you read it 
Is someone getting blessed tonight? Very important. Let me share with you a few principles about mentorship that will bless us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Someone is getting blessed in this place in the name of Jesus Christ. A mentor is a shortcut to your future. Mentorship is shortcut to your future. Experience is the slowest way to learn. Experience is the slowest way to learn in life. If you think everything you are going to get in life, there are all kinds of arrogant people who will never listen to any man. You don't have any man's books you are reading. There are no tips. I share the Holy Spirit for myself. Experience is the slowest way to achieve. It's like going to Lagos by trekking. You will arrive, but you may arrive dead. Hallelujah. A mentor is your coach. He tells you what you are doing right and he tells you what you are doing wrong. A mentor is not your friend. A mentor is not your confidant. You see where a lot of people miss it? Please, you neglect this principle I'm sharing. Just know that you have signed an agreement with failure. Guaranteed. A mentor is not your best friend. Your best friend loves you the way you are. Hallelujah. But a mentor loves you too much to leave you the way you are. This is the difference between a mentor and your best friend. Your best friend loves you. You will make all kinds of blunders and your best friend will say, It's alright. All things work together for them that love God. Who are the called. Because we want your your friend wants to have that relationship and that rapport. So they will forbear a lot of things. They will overlook a lot of things. So your friend, you can be in a room with your friend and be breaking a lot of laws and your friend can forbear. The day you leave your friend and go to another place, that's where you see the gravity of your blunders. Because your friend has... Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? There are many of you that you think you are doing very well because around you, are people who can tolerate you to death but mentorship reveals your weakness and provokes you to change a mentor has nothing nothing absolutely nothing to lose by your stubbornness or your lack of listening hallelujah it's not this kind of thing that okay i like this lady and she does something wrong and I want to correct her. I say, ah, let me correct this lady now and let this thing backfire. And say, okay, no problem. God, you are, that's not mentorship, brothers and sisters. That's called friendship. Are you getting my point? A man who can look at you and rebuke you and correct you. A man who your success does not come as a big deal to him. Are you getting my point now? Help us, Holy Spirit. Is someone getting blessed? Listen. Let me tell you something. Wisdom does not necessarily come with age. You must understand this. A mentor is somebody who can correct you. I want to say something that will bless you right now. Correction from your pastor or your leader or your mentor or if you are working, your superior is God's protection to you from your next tragedy. Are you getting my point? When, when your leader or your boss or your superior corrects you, it is God using them to save you from the next blunder and tragedy you are about to make. He said, my son, pay attention. Don't just hear. There is a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is just sound. Listening is hearing with the intention of obedience. That's the difference between listening and hearing. There are many people who hear all kinds of things. I have been more blessed from the men of God and geos of many ministries than even the workers in those ministries. They are there walking. They keep hearing but they never listen. Is God challenging someone tonight? Thank you, 
you, Jesus. Mentorship is impartation. Mentorship is impartation. A man imparts his grace, his wisdom. Mentorship is learning through the pain of another person. You are learning through someone else's pain. He already made blunders that you are about to make and he can save you decades of failure and recovery if only you will listen. Please make sure you are writing. In one hour, brothers and sisters, look at me. In one hour, I can read somebody's book and gain an experience that took him 30 years of pain and mistakes again and again are you getting my point in one hour i can for paying 500 naira pastor i can receive someone's book and sit down and gain wisdom that took someone 30 years when i read rediscovering the kingdom years ago the book just came out i made sure that i ordered it I wrote a letter to Mike Mo uh, Miles Munro and I told him, I've been blessed by your ministry. May God bless and honor you. And he replied me. He said, may God bless you. Use the book. I got that book. I paid so much. When it came into the country, I made sure I was one of the first people that got it. And I sat down and he said it took him 30 years of the dealings of the spirit. But within one day, you can get wisdom from the pain of a man. Is somebody getting blessed? do you want to have to be the one to pay every price by yourself your lifetime is not enough to correct yourself until you make it right is someone getting blessed in this place thank you jesus christ a mentor is one who knows already what you need to know a mentor is one that already knows what you need to know not one that is struggling to know what you need to know. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained, not are obtaining. A mentor is one who knows what you need to know. Whose mentorship do you treasure and value? That's what God is asking you. Whose voice have you been listening to to shape your life? I can tell you that this is the reason why you are where you are right now. Whose voice do you treasure and value? Very, very important. Mentorship is so, so important as far as the kingdom is concerned. Very, very important. Listen. I want to teach you how to be blessed from a mentor's life. There is an attitude. Hallelujah. This is where a lot of people are missing it. Please listen. I wrote it down here and let me just read it. I said to be blessed from a mentor's life, you must receive the person of that man of God. Not just the message, the person. I see a lot of people who say forget about the person. Just receive the message and leave him. That's junk and nonsense. Are you getting my point? You must first receive the person of that man of God. I know a lot of people who talk wrong things against men of God and great leaders. They sit down in conversations that tear them into pieces. And then they sit down and want to attempt to get the treasure in them. It never works that way. You cannot sit down and tear a man into pieces and believe that you will receive from that man. The law does not work that way. The first requirement is that you must receive the person. You must be able to trust the voice of God. Mentors are not perfect people. They are people who have knowledge. They are people who have experience. They are people who have grace. If you are not if you if you do not have the capacity to overlook a man's limitations i'll never forget one time i went somewhere and some people were discussing about benny Hinn shortly when the divorce happened is someone getting blessed tonight they were talking about benny Hinn 
and I had the people just shouting and they were saying, I'm disappointed in Benny Hinn. Imagine, how can a great man, and I just kept quiet, I was listening to them. We were watching a program and they were just talking, tearing this man down, saying, this generation self, now what is happening? You don't even trust anybody again. And I listened to them. And later on, I called the person. I said, how could you be this unwise? Hallelujah. Over an information you do not even understand. You are not Benny Hinn's PA. You don't know anything. It's easy to sit down and discuss about people, isn't it? It's easy to sit down and watch people play football since there's World Cup. Let me use that example. And say, ah, Nigeria, you didn't score. Shame on you. That heading, if you just had it, is easy. Talk is cheap. Until you get to that place, you will see how easy or how difficult it is. It's easy to see a pastor leading his church and sit down and say, Kai, I don't like this. These guys are so boring. This blah, blah, blah. This pastor's wife is not even very, very anointed. Why is she quoting this and that? Until the day you have the opportunity, you will pray and preach every sermon you can preach in one month. And that's when you will know that pastoring is not child's play you will fish you will copy the teaching of every man of god till your congregation can even tell you the message and you will find out that it's just it's just february then you will begin to respect every preacher that preaches every week that you stand on your stage and say ah but is that scripture correct it's easy to stand and judge idahosa said never criticize a man until you have done two times what the man has done once And I listened to them and I called the person. I said, No, don't do this. If you talk like this, you will never receive the grace upon his life. And I told him, You need to go to God and say, Lord, I am sorry. Hallelujah. You must receive the person of that man of God. Number two, you must trust his voice. You must trust that his voice represents the voice of God in your life. Please listen to this. I'm not teaching you error. Nobody obeyed instructions from a man of God in scripture and went to perdition. If he's a true man of God. You must be willing to submit to his instructions as coming from God. Listen. You never get a mentor give you instructions and you say i've had you sir let me go and think about it that's nonsense read your scriptures if you trust that the voice of this man of god is the voice of god you prove it by absolute loyalty this looks very childish but i will show you why so many people do not receive i remember one time when abuja and this particular great man of God we just sat down listening to him and when when I saw that man I kept quiet for hours this man was talking some of my colleagues were just making noise and I kept quiet I was listening to this man and he was looking at me eyeball to eyeball and at a point he said what kind of person are you don't you talk and I kept quiet I was just listening listening and later on he cornered me outside and he said, I know what I've seen in the spirit about you. Pray for me. I said, I'll pray in my room. Not here. He said, lay hands on me. I said, no, I won't do that. Many foolish young preachers say, yes, sir. You are celebrating my me. Kneel down. Let me show you what anointing can do. See that? No. This is why many people do not. Let me tell you. Success is not about business or job. If you do, it, it accounts for less than 10% of the equation of success. If you neglect these laws, you neglect it to your detriment. Praise the Lord. Is someone listening? It is only when you have accepted the voice and the person of this man, then his message, his grace, and his anointing will be effective in your life it's amazing how people come and sit down in a meeting listen to their men of god and immediately they come out they sit down in forums and try to discuss and tear everything into pieces and just sit down and say man oh boy 
that thing this man is saying this is nonsense i remember one man who was criticizing mike Mudok and he was even warning me he said be careful this seed seed man everything is seed every what sort of man is that you will stand and say they should sow a seed into his life i said that's all you saw about this man that's everything you saw about this man i said time will tell years later i saw him in the midst of financial crisis he was reading one of my Mudok's book why people do not receive their financial harvest see let me tell you something about life <laughs> life can humble any level of arrogance it's only a matter of time there are realities that is like a wall you will box it till you get tired at that point hallelujah bible says that david cried and cried until he had no strength he came to himself thank you jesus christ mentorship creates seven things and let me just put it like i said we have a series and we'll talk on it more extensively mentorship creates seven things in your life when you embrace that ministry number one it creates impartation number two it creates guidance number three it creates access It creates impartation it creates guidance it creates access number four it creates endorsement number five it creates promotion or a platform for promotion number six mentorship creates a platform for wisdom seven mentorship creates speed in your life take note of this it was through the wisdom of a dear woman of God that I respect who called me one day. I used to talk about men of God and I would mention their names. And with my zeal, I would just be talking and the woman called me one day. And said, my son, you are a young man and you have a very long journey to go. God is going to use you greatly. Never criticize a man of God. You are too young to know everything around a man of God's life. Make sure from today. And I said, Mommy, God is my witness and in your presence. This is the last time I will ever open my mouth and talk about a man of God mentioning his name. I will challenge wrong doctrines, but not to talk about a man of God. Wisdom. I would have destroyed an opportunity in the height of what God will be doing in Koinonia. One day now, I will make a foolish decision, maybe on air. Are you seeing that now? This is how great people, I'm showing you the wisdom and the blessings of mentorship. There are many of you who have seen people and you disregard them because you think a mentor is only one who has your kind and level of anointing. There are wisdoms that are greater than the realm of anointing. Levels of wisdom. Hallelujah. I learned silence. From one of our boards of trustees i notice every time you are talking to that man he will keep quiet you will talk and say all kinds of things and he will keep quiet i didn't used to be like that especially if god has revealed to me what what your problem is before you talk i say please save save us the time and he taught me the art of listening that it is wisdom to listen to a man see that Thank you jesus christ you don't decide or choose your mentor let me shock you now <laughs> mm. mentorship just like your assignment is discovered you discover them and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons in your life we have a series on that and i will teach you you don't sit down and choose your mentor because you will never choose a man who will flog you. Are you getting my point? You are smart enough. Mentorship is like your assignment. Why will I choose a man who, when people are celebrating me and saying, Apostle Joshua Selman, you look at me and say, young man, no problem, but there is more work to be done. Keep that, all of those accolades and let's work. Do you think I naturally will like that kind of person? mentorship is like assignment you don't choose that's why a lot of people choose somebody and he rebukes them he said oh boy i am seeing that 
you like women. Say, ah, what sort of embarrassment is this? And he moves from the name you used to call him, maybe man of God or daddy or papa. Say, sir, please. Ah, I don't like women. What kind of thing is this? I am a prophet or I am an apostle. You are an apostle, I'm an apostle. <laughs> Hallelujah. How can you tell me I like women? Me? And you don't even see me around. He says, I'm telling you, you like women. Go and walk on it. Say, no, I don't like this guy. Let me go to this other one. He said, you are okay. Just believe. Push yourself. And then the day something backfires, truly you find yourself sleeping around. You will now get up and say, goodness. And this man saw it. I told one of my friends something years ago. Immediately I looked at him. I said, you have a lot of tendencies and I want you to walk at it. At that point, he even got offended that day. But after like four or five years, he called me one day. He said, can you remember something that you told me? He said, honestly, I am embarrassed to even believe that I'm a victim of this. I told him, no, there's no point for embarrassment. Once you acknowledge something, change. Look, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Mentorship is so powerful. Somebody can sit down and look at you while you are bubbling with all your zeal. He can see all the tendencies. Oh, I'm a millionaire. Let money come. Oh, kingdom. You will see what will happen. And the person says, make sure you take out time to start praying. Because I see money destroying you. This is not word of knowledge. This is, this is the excellency of pain and wisdom and experience. It's amazing how people come for counseling, pastor. They come on Monday for counseling and they are now coming to seek my advice and they just come, they sit down. Good afternoon, sir. I want to seek your advice. And for 30 minutes, they are just running their mouth and talking and I'm keeping quiet, listening to them. And after 30 minutes, they say, I feel very relieved. And I say, let's pray. Let's pray. They say, sir, and, and you know the Bible says in the book of this and that and that and that and that. A lady, I remember a lady came for counseling and I like putting wine on top of my fridge. And she looked at it and said, I hope this is not alcoholic wine. And I just looked at the lady. She believed that was funny. And then I looked. It means you don't trust. You believe that there's something I'm doing hidden. If I stand and we preach and we make altar call and we talk about standing in holiness and truth and you see wine on my table and you look and I'm feeding you spiritually if you cannot trust that the wine that is on my table is non-alcoholic how can you trust that I'm not sleeping around and moving in integrity how can you trust that I'm not going to get anointing from somewhere are you getting the point now so many people have made themselves failures and we keep blaming God Whereas there are irrefutable principles. No man outgrows the need to be guided in his life. No man. At whatever level. No man. You discover your mentors. And you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons of your lives. Mentors are not necessarily perfect people. Please, is someone getting blessed tonight? Mentors are not necessarily perfect people. They are people who have come, who you have come to trust the word and in the instructions of God in their mouth. Now look at me. There is an attitude. That you must have every time you are before a great man. Please listen. This is not human worship. When you sit before a mentor. Or before a great man. Only ask questions. And listen. When you sit before a great man. That's not time for discussion. A lot of arrogant people get access to men of God that other people are dying to see. And they sit down and for 30 minutes they are running their mouths and talking nonsense. They are saying we are colleagues in the ministry and we are just talking. Or we are colleagues in this. You sit down with a woman who has trained eight children and you are a young lady getting married two weeks. You are already talking to her about pregnancy. Say this and that and that. I read it in this book. This woman gave birth to eight children. Out of the eight there were twins and the woman is just looking at you like this yes you went to school i didn't go to school 
and you sit down you went there and say mommy what advice can you give me now that i'm going into a marital home and you just look and you are wondering after all she was poor i went to school i i, I just returned from america and the woman is just looking at you you believe this woman is too old or naive to understand what you're going or maybe a lady is pregnant for instance and maybe she wants to seek advice from a woman because of maybe any complication two months three months into the pregnancy and you now look at her and say mommy is there any way you can help me eight children eight children and you believe is such a level of arrogance Say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to honor and recognize greatness when I see it. When I sit before men who have grace, when I sit before men who mentor my life, I, some, I don't even sit on the chair sometimes. God is my witness. I will sit down and my phone, I'm just waiting. Every time you see results in a man's life, there is more than what you can see. Are you getting my point? If it is the equation of God, there is more than you can see. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me. I will never forget a young man who came from Kaduna. I remember the guy came and sat down and said, um, there's something wrong with my life. And I told the guy, I need to pray for you. He said, no, that's not the issue. And he was talking and saying all kinds of things. And then I was looking. Immediately he entered. I saw a spirit tormenting this guy. I said, let me, <laughs> I need to pray for you. It happened one time with another lady again from a ministry. I will not mention the name. No, she came and was saying all kinds of things. And this guy was talking, talking, talking. And he said, come on, that he even needs to ask me a question about this issue of deliverance. There's something. I said, please, I'm not here to argue with you. There are so many people sitting outside. Can I pray for you? The last thing this guy remembered was that he knelt down on the floor. And the protocol people, when he got up, he had scattered everywhere. Protocol people were helping him. The guy went back to his ministry. He has a ministry. Ah! He, he sent a text. He said, what is all this? And then he came. They came for Koinonia together with some of his, his followers and the people. And it opened him up to another reality. What you see is not all there is. There can be a lot more. I have taken challenges to men that are greater than me. And to me, those challenges look like mountains. But when I take it there, I, they just look and say, oh, is this it? Do this, do that. This is a simple issue now. And I'm like, goodness, how come I didn't think about this? Just like some people come with challenges and they are complaining. They are shouting. They won't let you talk. They say, you cannot imagine. Where will my school fees come from? Hey, hey, hey. And they are closing next tomorrow or whatever. And you are saying, calm down. Say, where we, do you know what it means to raise 20,000? Calm down. Whereas maybe God has already instructed you to pay the school fees. Just calm down. It's comforting when you can find a man who can walk over what looks like a mountain for you. I cannot tell you how many how people come with all kinds of challenges and they come maybe for counseling and you can see that these things have prolonged for years and as soon as they enter i just start smiling because i know in less than five minutes this will be over whereas you can sit down arrogantly and remain there forever hallelujah help us holy spirit there is always a price to pay please listen there is always a price to pay to follow an uncommon mentor there is always a price it will cost you to follow a true mentor 
adaptation is the key to enjoying the ministry of a mentor in your life look at me never expect a mentor to adjust to your life you are joking if you cannot adjust to the person's life i'll never forget when i went to abuja one time to see a particular man of god four days i had not seen him four days and god was my witness that i never complained i said lord thank you it's a, it's a privilege these are people to wait for counseling to see me and they are not complaining so i have no rights to complain there are people who call me hello hello this and that and that and i tell them okay we have a counselor i say please i don't have that time i can't wait i'm busy ah you are coming to see lecturers professors great men and a young man just comes with his sad jeans is there any way we can just see sharp sharp please i have things to do pack your load and go back to your trouble and remain there there is a price never forget this there is a price to pay for mentorship there is a price. Apostle Johnson Suleiman was talking and he said something. He said that um, every time he called um, um, Papa Ayo or Richard Jaffa, you know, he would call him and then he would say, Johnson, how are you? And that's how he would leave the phone there. He would be doing something. Johnson Suleiman said, that's how you wait. You can't complain. You can't argue. You can't off the phone. That's how you wait. And later on, he said, just a minute, I'm coming back. And you'll continue doing something else. Some of you would have been offended and angry. And say, do you not know I'm an apostle too? And then as a while, you say, okay, what is it? A mentor is not one who calls you apostle Joshua Selman. He should be able to say, Joshua, come. You see that? Sometimes we are used to the accolades of men. I am apostle. Even if you say pastor, they say, am I pastor? Is A the same thing as P? I'm not, I mean, you better call the correct thing. May God help us. Because if you get this principle alone, many of us tonight, this is the key to the next level of your life. You have neglected the ministry of great men. There is nothing embarrassing about acknowledging that there are people who have gone ahead of you. Praise the Lord. Pursuit is the only proof of passion. There are people who get angry. Maybe they want to see me. And maybe we are away on a trip. And then they are angry. And they call. They say, I've been calling you for two days. And I say, I'm sorry. What's the issue? They say, please, I've been trusting God for something in my life. And you just finished quarreling me. You have been calling me for two days. I'm not responding. Whereas maybe I was preaching. Whereas maybe I was having time with God. You know, please and please, brothers and sisters, it takes humility to rise to the top. If you are not ready to be humble, get set to remain at that level. Hallelujah. I shared with you my story on how I was already preparing to go to the US to go and scrub the toilet of Charles and Francis Hunter before they died. I was going for a conference but my mission was to go and scrub the toilet and i ins i made up my mind that when i got there i would insist i'll tell them my job is to scrub the toilet for two solid weeks scrubbing the toilet every day there are two ways to receive from a man of god your seed and your service your seed and your service you can serve your way into an anointing. You can sow your way into an anointing. Avoid familiarity. I beg you, Koinonia, listen to me. Let my conscience be clear before God that I taught you this. Avoid familiarity. There are people in my life. Our daddy prof is here. And the way, the way that that prof respects me so much it even makes me embarrassed i never 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 will take his grace and his ministry and his wisdom for granted never ever hallelujah many of you do not understand the secret listen please listen this is where you may be missing a lot of things you can be with a man of god for a long time 
never forget who you are talking to it's not enough to talk to people never forget who jesus looked at them and said before your father abraham was i am and they said ah, what are you saying never forget who you are talking to this is not human worship is the law these are the ancient parts that made people great i never get familiar there are all kinds of men of god something something happened yesterday and we're having a conversation one of the top protocol people in one of the reputable ministries i won't call their name just to honor the person he had been trying to reach me and he had called and called and called and called and somehow the call could not get through and you know he looked at his status and he was offended he is really an honorable person you see i mean the direct like pa of one of the great men of god in the country and he's been trying to reach me and for whatever reason when he got to our protocol department we were in we were in in, in a meeting in um, in Quara state and so we could not attend to him and then eventually he got offended and then when he called you know he was speaking and he sounded a bit arrogant but when he told me who he was i would have said oh God, you have told me who you are let me tell you who i am too i just told him i said i'm sorry sir i really apologize i am sorry we do not mean to disrespect the grace or the office that you're working we apologize on behalf of myself on behalf of the ministry immediately the man too said i'm sorry it's not like i just meant to talk like that it's just that you know this and that and that and that never be embarrassed to honor greatness when a great man rebukes you shut up whether he's right or wrong keep quiet don't get up and say i'm justifying myself what is all this human worship after all it is god continue and see how far it will take you when a elderly person rebukes me when someone who has gone ahead of me rebukes me all i say is thank you sir i'm grateful for the opportunity you see many of you don't have the opportunity to see the way these things happen because they happen in the secret place and so you just believe that every time we're just standing boss 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 oh i wish it were so i wish it were so i wish it were so praise the lord number two principle number two let's hurry up goodness time is gone the law of value i'm talking about your assignments now you want to be successful please listen to me this will probably be one of the greatest revelations you've heard about your assignment i want you to listen your assignment is called the law of value hebrews 10 verse 7 please hebrews 10 verse 7 God is changing someone's life here in the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10 verse 7. I'd like us to read it. One, two, read. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is what? It has been written. Your assignment, I have come to execute that which has been written. Write a few points about your assignment. Number one, everything created on the earth solves a problem. We taught this to the school of ministry in uh, uh, the course called personal transformation. Everything created, not these exact words, but then something similar. Everything created on the earth solves a problem. That means everything created has a divine assignment. Everybody say, I have a divine assignment. Whether you know it or not is irrelevant. Just say, I have a divine assignment. Because after this teaching tonight, in the name of the Lord, you will stop escorting others in destiny and start making a definite progress as far as your assignment is concerned. There are so many people escorting others. Jacob, had a prophetic grace that he never used until at the point of his death. And he began to prophesy and see into his children and speak over them. Every man in the earth 
is a working solution to a problem everybody in the earth is a working solution to a problem say i am a working solution to a problem yes your existence proves that there was a problem and god sent you to solve it and brothers and sisters fulfilling your destiny is solving that problem for your generation many have died without solving that problem and god had to take their the problems and transfer to other people as a double mandate upon them because some other people were not faithful the problems you solve decides your reward never forget this money is not a miracle money is not magic money is a formula is a reward for solving problems i can look at your financial level today and i can tell you you are where you are proportionate to the problems you have solved that's why you will pay a gate man ten thousand right but you will pay a manager five hundred thousand what is the difference the problems they are solving the manager is under ac he's wearing suit he has a chef but you are still paying him five hundred thousand the gate man is outside there's no ac in his small room but you are paying him ten thousand you get angry and switch the people let them switch roles for two weeks and see what happens to that corporation let the gate man become the ceo give him all the files to sign and all the decisions to make and then you will see the way everything will nose dive within two weeks so the problem that you solve is what decides your significance god does not decide your significance is god's desire for everybody he said you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood but you decide your significance there is no reason to envy any man there is no reason to be jealous every one of us has in us the ability to solve problems and the degree of the problems that you solve decides your significance there are so many men of god angry at at crowd and they criticize crowd and they say forget it crowd does not mean anything a man can leave his state with so many churches and ministries there and travel a great distance to come and meet a man of god they perceive can be able to solve their problems let me tell you you become a money magnet when you master the art of solving problems men will pay you with their life is someone learning something tonight the problem you solve brothers and sisters decides your your reward i'm ministering the word right now i'm solving a problem it's a spiritual problem are you seeing that anybody who says preachers should not be blessed does not know what he's saying whenever you solve a problem according to the kingdom there is a reward whether you sell it or you give it free this is the only reason why i am not charging you for listening is that true because the jehovah jireh of my life who made this law in place will never leave me hungry you want money you want prosperity what problem are you solving whose problem are you solving are you seeing why the wealth of an arm robber is wrong because an arm robber points a gun he's not solving any problem but he wants to be rewarded prosperity is not a mystery brothers and sisters the problems you solve decide your significance when you solve a problem you create a divine debt d-e-b-t you create a divine debt it's like when you solve problems here on earth god is like making god i mean god owes you let me put it that way your assignment is decided by god but is discovered by you let's hurry up your assignment in life is decided by god but it is discovered by you jeremiah chapter 1 he began to speak to the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i called you and i ordained you to be a prophet is someone getting blessed now right the most important revelation you need to have about your assignment is what your uniqueness is 
your lifting is not in your similarity with others it is your difference your uniqueness there are many preachers in nigeria there are many preachers in zaria there are many preachers in kaduna what makes my ministry different what makes my ministry to the body of christ different what listen concentrate on your uniqueness not your similarity when it comes to purpose your uniqueness becomes your edge so if you are selling recharge card brother b is selling recharge card what is your difference what is that distinguishing factor that's what gives you an edge oh hallelujah i thank god for his wisdom how do you discover your assignment let's write it very quickly how do you discover your assignment number one what you hate is a clue to what you have been called to solve write it what you hate passionately is a clue that you have been anointed to solve it anger is the seed for change whatever gets you angry and agitated is what you were designed to change I hate ignorance I hate the effect of poverty on people I hate it with a passion I hate ignorance of the principles of God I hate the fact that people do not recognize the Lordship of Christ and these things have constructed my passion they have built the framework of my teachings what agitates you take note of the pain and the things that annoy you write very quickly two things that really agitate you that every time you see it you cry and you wish for change there is an anointing there there is always an anointing in the place of pain pain is the birthplace for genuine anointing thank you jesus christ identify your highest point of anger identify your highest point of anger there is something that agitates you when you see people go through it when you see your family members go through it something in you cries that's the anointing of the spirit hallelujah when moses saw the egyptian suffering something in him started rising up because there was a deliverer in him are you getting my point now to an extent that he killed somebody Have you been ignoring your pain do you know that in your pain is the voice of the spirit god has been speaking to you that you have been anointed for this reason there are many of us god has has anointed us to be saviors he has brought us in different mountains to do mighty things for the kingdom are you seeing what we have refused we have ignored please let me have your attention don't worry the holy spirit is just doing his thing God has anointed us in different ways. Take note of your pain. Take note. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number two, what do you love to talk about most in your life? Oh, that's a clue to your assignment. What do you love to talk about? There are many of you, you sit down five minutes, you have already seen the clothes everybody is wearing in Koinonia. There is grace there. Don't let anybody preach you out of it. There are some of you, when you see children, they can even flog you because of children. There is grace. Your passions, your passion. When the anointing of the Spirit comes upon your passion. I remember when I was in secondary school, I would give everything. The little money that I'll have, I will share it and give everybody. They will buy meat pie, buy everything, and I will suffer like a fool. But it was a passion I could not help. There are many families who build houses and just keep it and say, when a man of God comes to town, let him come and stay. Have you seen people like that? There, is, there are passions. It's just that many of us have not been trained to honor our passions. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. I will study my passions and I take my passions as a voice, as the voice of God speaking over my destiny. 
What is the conversation that excites you? There are conversations that when you start in my presence, I'm going to sleep or send you away. I guarantee you. Even if you mention Jesus in the middle of the conversation. But there are things that excite me. Is it not amazing how somebody can be watching maybe a fashion show passionately and you are sleeping and snoring? The interest is just not there. Whereas you put Benny Hinn and I can be watching a crusade and I'm watching, I'm struggling with sleep. I'm nodding but I'm, I'm focused. And I say, what is this stress? Sleep. There is something. It's like fire in your bones. Have you been responding to your passions? When you find your assignment, you have found your reward system in life. When you find your assignment, brothers and sisters, you have signed exit out of a world of failure and poverty and mediocrity. And I mean what I'm saying. When you truly find your assignment, when the Spirit takes over your soul, when the Spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul your assignment must become your obsession brothers and sisters you will never excel in any area that has not become an obsession for you your assignment must become your obsession. And let me challenge you with one more thing before we round up this assignment issue. Listen to me. There must be a theme that, that defines the entire scope of your life. Let me tell you what that means. Every time you mention Aura Roberts, what comes into your heart? Healing. Is that true? Benny Hinn, healing. Is that true? Billy Graham, evangelism. J.J. Okocha. Is that true? If I mention your name and nothing comes to my mind, your difference has not been refined enough. Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? When you say Tiger Woods, golf, right? Tyra Banks, fashion people. See them all smiling. Praise God. If your life's mission cannot be summarized in one word, you do not know it. You can say my life's mission is, is to bring the rescue, the, the, the lost sheep, you know, from all the wilderness. Look, all of that long story, there must be a theme that you can live for and die for. hallelujah now i want to tell you something very powerful take note of opportunities in your life everything that rises from god camouflages as opportunities take note of opportunities opportunities help you to reveal discover and explore your assignment Many of us do not know that God speaks through opportunities. God never told David to kill Goliath. He saw an opportunity. And he saw that he had been equipped to maximize that opportunity. And he took advantage of that opportunity into an unending world. He got a wife for free. He got wealth for free because he maximized an opportunity. And I want to tell you something. God speaks again through favor. This is how you know that you have been called in an area. Never stay in an area where there is no favor. It's a sign that God is not there. Even in the prison, Joseph was still favored. That's a sign that God is with you. Please and please make up your mind to follow the path of favor. There are many of us struggling in areas where it's obvious. God has been using the language of favor or otherwise to speak to you. 
favor everybody say favor god speaks to you through favor never stay in a place where there is no favor the next thing you need to know about your assignment is that your assignment is geographical please get this you are not sent everywhere oh lord may tell you in a vision i'm sending you to the nations that is a pregnant statement because you will raise other people who will get to the nations no single man will conquer the whole world you are sent to a person or a group of people you will always be celebrated when you get to the people where your anointing has been sent to bless stop trying to seek for recognition or approval everywhere god has not sent me to everybody it is good for me to understand that god has sent me to a people anytime you get to a place where you have been sent they will receive your anointing there are many people struggling in regions that God has not sent them. They are trying to heal the sick. They are trying to do everything. Forcing healing ministries. Forcing evangelists. They have run the whole ministry into debt. They are trying to organize crusades. There is no grace there. Never forget that your assignment has its geography. And Isaac sowed in that land, not in any land. Abraham, come, I will take you to a place. That is where I will bless you. Brothers and sisters, after this program, use this weekend, especially for those who are trusting God for a place where you will stay. You must never sit down and allow job to decide your geography. It's a costly decision. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must flog it out. Go on a fast for one day or two days. If you can't fast, take fruits or something light and flog it out with destiny and say, oh God, I know that my prosperity and my blessing is tied to geography. Let me tell you something. I come from Plateau State and the little years I've had serving God and ministry that state never opened up to me they were never opened and prepared to receive of my grace and it bothered me because i was blessing other people and blessing other states and i said lord what is it about this place this is my own very place let me be a blessing to them and god kept telling me again and again they are not ready to receive your anointing there is too much familiarity and do you know what happened the the city of Joss opened up for me through my teachings they never even knew i was the one it was students from Futmina and yola and all of that including my neighbor i mean neighbors that we grew up together they took my teaching my own uncle my own uncle listened to one of my teachings and started crying and then got to find out i was the one and he cried and said my own son is in ministry and is changing the world and i'm here dying and so that that familiarity they received the teaching not knowing it was me and then when they had now respected the anointing then god opened up to them it is this person are you getting the point now that's the reason why although many of you are anointed you find out that every time you get home you just feel ordinary that presence of the anointing never comes because you are the last born you are the child everybody knows even if you tell them god is saying they say shut up what do you know about god but the day they are ready to receive your anointing they will be amazed at the dimension that they will enter your assignment is geographical thank you jesus christ Your difference will be rewarded when you are geographically accurate. Listen, listen, please listen. Look up, look up before you write. Let me explain something to you. Um, come, Sam. How many of you agree and believe that Sam is a powerful worshiper? But do you know, as gifted as Sam can be, Sam can be in a territory where his grace is not celebrated and appreciated. How many of you have been in a place you know it's not pride that God has honored you? There are graces, there are giftings, but you are in a territory 
where nobody can celebrate your grace and God takes you even for a moment to a place and goodness even you you are shocked you never knew that you were that great until you got to that place and you see people celebrating that grace has it happened to anybody you keep singing and when you sing they just tell you go and sit down and you get to a place where people say sorry sir are you living right now please can you come and minister in our church which hotel are you saying say they, they kept me in one car they say please come 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 make make arrangement make and you are saying goodness look let me tell you there are things that people do for me when i go for ministrations and i'm amazed I'm almost saying, oh God, please let this thing not become human worship. And I'm, I'm shocked, honestly. When I'm in my hotel room, I'm now looking, I'm like, goodness. Ah! I will discover every other thing that is left that I've not discovered. <laughs> oh, when you are in the geography of your assignment, men will pay you in a way that will shock you. They will pay for any and everything. To receive your grace stop concentrating on places where you are tolerated there are many of you you are everybody tolerates you everywhere there is a place where your grace can be celebrated and i tell you part of my life's goal as a leader in this ministry is to harness the giftings of people and to celebrate it and to make them great sam god bless you when we went to quara state some ministered and he led worship he was so powerful when it was the time i don't know how many times he has seen himself as a man of god goodness that was the first time i saw sam moving very powerfully in the anointing i mean it was time to minister to the worshipers and you could see the anointing and the grace and these people were receiving after the ministration or oh, everybody almost every i think everybody except they were teasing yerima and they say it was only yerima they didn't come to meet him for counseling because he was a media person he was just snapping but everybody from protocol to every one of the people there were piles of people waiting for counseling you know what tells what that tells me those people have recognized their grace but they may come back home and you can just look at them sam how are you and you just shake him and say sam can you please come we have one small fellowship can you just sing one or two choruses <laughs> celebrate greatness when you enter its presence don't be embarrassed don't pretend it's not there i always celebrate them they know it i celebrate the workers that's why we organize dinner at the end of the year for them to honor them to bless them and i use the opportunity to tell them i am grateful it's easy for people to see what god is doing in this ministry and say it's joshua selman it's not true what you see is the brainchild of people who are by far smarter than me greater than me who have decided to submit their gifts to be used for the kingdom and I'm wise enough to know that these people deserve honor. Are you getting my point now? That's why we provide free bus transport. Because we, we respect the gift of God that is in you people. And everyone here. We never, you never see me treat people based on who your father is. I don't want to know whether your father is a minister. Whether you are married to, to the... To a relation of the president uh -uh. no we no man after the flesh when you come here we treat you with dignity and respect as much as possible is someone learning something please let's finish up on the assignment and touch the last law and then we'll pray just give me 10 minutes and then we'll be out of here when you are where you are assigned nobody can compete with you this is a powerful revelation when you are at the place of your assignment hear me brothers and sisters no man can compete with you i see a lot of preachers struggling i've seen a lot of men of god with all humility wasting their time and their energy trying to do the things that i'm doing i'm doing it with ease because there is grace there i see a lot of people struggling putting themselves under needless pressure and i say why why I never try to do what I am not gifted, anointed, skilled, or trained for. I rather bring in a grace that can function in that capacity and then we receive of that ministry. 
now let me advise you especially if you are in ministry or you are in any form of leadership there's something i wrote that is very powerful you don't give yourself to people listen you give yourself to god and you give god to the people you will die if you want to meet everybody's needs by yourself give yourself to god and give god to the people many preachers are dying and killing themselves they want to do everything for everybody no sir no sir give yourself to god and then give god to the people thank you jesus christ thank you jesus christ number three this is the last and then we'll pray someone's life is changing tonight i tell you you will walk out of this place knowing that you will enter extraordinary success i don't care what the limitations are in the name of jesus christ as we talk about this just just pray can you just pray in one minute and say lord i love your laws i love your laws go ahead and pray just pray in one minute as i talk about this last law just few minutes our time is gone and then you will be blessed and will pray i love i love i love your presence i love i love i love your truth i love i love i love your presence I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your truth. hallelujah oh shibala katabaladaba somebody's life is about to change first timothy chapter 5 17 and 18 the last law we'll talk about is the law of honor the law of honor blessed be the name of the lord every time i teach on this something happens to someone's destiny the law of honor first timothy 5 17 and 18 look up everybody Let's read. One, two, read. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of what? Double honor. Especially they that labor in word and in doctrine. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more scripture. First Peter 2 verse 17. And then I'll teach. This for me is one of the greatest laws of success. It may not be like that for you, but this for me Everybody read. One, two, read. One more time. For the last time now, one to go. Honor all men and honor the king honor all men and honor the king wisdom is the ability to recognize difference but honor is the celebration and the rewarding of that difference to honor a man means to celebrate and to reward his uniqueness that's what it means to honor to honor a man means to celebrate and reward his uniqueness please look up honor in the school of success is the seed for access say it one more time everybody honor is the seed for access 
you will never access a place a grace an anointing a dimension of wisdom that you dishonor every grace you dishonor lives your life every grace you honor is multiplied in your life never forget this never forget this when the devil wants to drain you of grace he makes you to begin to dishonor the graces around you and you find out that nothing will be the bible says honor all men and then honor the king this is why we take our time to worship god we take our time to honor the king honor always creates favor let me tell you this if you've been looking for how to create favor in your life i'm telling you how it comes now favor honor always creates favor 100 percent of the time the favor in your life will flow in the direction of honor you dishonor men you will never experience favor listen listen look at me this is pastor, pastor pete rock's wife get this hallelujah pastor pete is my friend He's my brother in the ministry. I love him so much. He respects me so much and I honor him so much. This is his wife. Are you getting my point? If I treat his wife well, I have communicated that honor. She will speak well about me in the presence of her husband and in the presence of another. Is that true? Is that true? So I am teaching you that the reason why many of us have not seen favor with men is that we have not engaged the law of honor. Many young people do not honor their parents and you do not know why favor does not leave them to you. There's all kinds of disrespect around. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Let me tell you why many young people are struggling in Nigeria. I want to be very sincere with you. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. It says, so that your days will be long and it will go well with you. Are you seeing why it's not going well with many people? I know people who stand and look at their parents and insult them. Call their mother prostitute. Call their father drunkard. And it may be true what they are saying. But let me tell you the truth. You dishonor your parents. You are in for failure failure that God will not stop except you cry for mercy and change is someone getting blessed never dishonor elders I don't care what level of grace you get to as I am like this if I see an elderly woman that I know carrying something maybe she went to grant and all of that I see mothers around they go to the engine to go and grind by themselves as old as they are. They put it on their head. They are going. And immediately they are going. You see the child just bouncing out with one lady he calls his girlfriend. Or one guy she calls her boyfriend. They don't even know what they are doing. They are just bouncing. And they are, mom, see ya. And they are going. And the mother is carrying this. This is dishonor. The Bible says if you don't honor your parents. Listen to what I'm telling you. It says it will not be well with you. As simple as that hallelujah oh i will say it i will say it there are many of us we have no respect at all for elderly people there are even people that beat their parents that one is not just that it will not be well with you you just brought a curse upon your life if you ever take your hand and beat an elderly person especially your parents whether they speak to you or not i am telling you scripturally the bible says a man that curses his father his light shall be taken away and it shall be dim for him that's what the bible says i will never never rebuke an elder these are laws there are many graduates they thought he's just getting degree now you have gotten the degree nothing is happening they thought it's just oratory and all of that. No. They thought it's just reading business books. They've read all the business books. There are no patriarchal blessings upon their lives. No parental blessing. There's no elderly person that has spoken to you and said, let it go well. 
Alléluia. Thank you, Jesus Christ. The law of honor. Honor creates favor. What is favor? Favor is someone willing to solve your problems for you. That's favor. When someone is willing to solve your problems for you. Whether financial problems, spiritual problems. When you honor men, you have access to their grace. Look, let me tell you. If a door has been closing again and again and again. Especially the door to the grace of a man of God. Check well, there is dishonor there. The entire Ten Commandments was all about honor. Honoring God and honoring men. God is so obsessed with honor. It's not enough to believe in a man of God. You must honor that man to ever get the grace. I taught this in commanding results. And it's all oh goodness. I cannot begin to tell you the testimonies that have come from people. Many of us do not honor grace. You allow familiarity. I'm not teaching human worship. Hallelujah. Learn to celebrate greatness when you see it. Please write this down. Learn to celebrate greatness. Never trivialize a man's accomplishments, especially if he's spectacular. You say, this woman is a director in, in, in this particular parastata. So what about it? Anybody can be a director. Why are you not a director? It's amazing how we trivialize a lot of things. And eh, she's behaving like this. Is it because she's a man of God's wife? What's the big deal about being a man of God's wife? That's why God didn't make you a man of God's wife. You see that? Celebrate greatness. I, I, I shared this and I'll say it again. I will never allow a man greater than me to be in a place and he's paying for something I can pay for and it's within my power to pay. I will fight with that man there or that woman. Man of God or no man of God. I will fight till I pay for it. But there are many of us. You come and sit down and you see elderly people standing. And you just sit down. Say, I beg, forget. Oh, this is not the issue of anything. This is my right. You see a lot of people do that. And we laugh about it. And you find out that in spite of all the prayer and the anointing service and everything. No job. No marriage. No nothing. And you do not know that this is the law we are violating. How many children have gone to meet their parents to kneel down and say, I'm of a marriageable age right now. Please bless me. Release the anointing that made you get married upon my life. You are there complaining that the home is not going well. You, you thought you were playing. Now 35, 36 and counting. Learn this night. God is bringing deliverance for you. It's not everything that is about witches and wizards. We like passing responsibility to the devil. Take responsibility this night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Honor. There are many men of God. They, they have little ministries, 10 members, 12 members, and you hear the way they preach and lambast ministers. I had the other day, the other man talking, and do, they know nothing about organization. They know nothing about finance. They don't even have the money to be able to learn finances. They know nothing about organization. Yet they sit down in that little mindset local champions and begin to castigate and, and, and talk about everybody. See, stop it tonight. If you are in the attitude of trivializing people's success, repent tonight. Every time you see success, kill envy fast by celebrating it immediately. The lady is beautiful. Say it fast before the devil now tells you, this and that. Ah, I appreciate you. You're a lovely lady. Very pretty. God bless you. That's all. You can never criticize what you have celebrated. Hallelujah. Sam is singing. Eh? He's singing, but what's, what's the big deal, Jare? There's one other guy that sang. It's really not about the other guy. He's intimidated. So he's using the other guy to turn down another person. You, you cannot sing anything. Now you are, you are just looking and saying, well, this lady, what's she trying? She's trying to show us that she can speak English. 
once you find yourself criticizing people you are communicating a dissatisfaction it's natural with human beings manage it through the law of honor are you getting what i'm saying i celebrate men of god i celebrate vessels of honor generously many of us are very embarrassed let me tell you a few things that you should never do look up please never try to introduce a pastor or a preacher in your church or your fellowship and say this is not a new person is one of us is is one of our friends i you know he's not a is a you know a lot of people do that they say this is one of us uh, and then somebody who has trained and helped and invested in you say he's is an elder uncle just because he cannot accept that he's a great man and we begin to use all kinds of english see that or if i want to introduce um pete rock's wife now she was a member of koinonia here before he used his eagle eyes <laughs> you know all all of that and then he came up and, and carried and all and all of that but listen it has changed hallelujah I can keep looking at her and say this and that uh -uh. this is my friend's wife and she deserves my honor and i will honor her any day i will never see her trekking somewhere and not stop the car to pick her i don't care where she's going this is honor are you getting my point many of you do not know the law of honor i celebrate men in the secret and in the open i've been following a conference a conference right now i had to follow mike mudok's conference with david biome and i've been listening pastor and eating the videos again and again there's a conference going on in koza i cannot attend it and i've been following it online paying the internet right now as i'm preaching it's paining me but i'm supposed <laughs> i'm supposed to have been following the conference but i sure will remedy for it Benny Hinn came to Accra. I was happy. I said, I, I, must, I must go and meet him. And I was so excited. When I checked the date, I found out it was miracle service. I said, ah, oh God, you have to compensate me for this. If you are embarrassed about honor, you will not be honored too. Are you getting my point? Please, is somebody learning this tonight? Say in the name of Jesus, I honor all men. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I honor you and I celebrate you truly. Say it. Even if he's pinching you, say it. I know he's not your mate, but say it. I honor you and I celebrate you greatly. Turn to another person and say, I honor you. I know you fought in the morning, but say it. I honor you. Hallelujah never trivialize greatness no matter how little it is never trivialize greatness never trivialize greatness they invite you to go and preach and you know that this is a church that you never who dash monkey banana you it, it never is just favor don't pretend as though we have been ministering in this kind of churches uh -uh. celebrate the gift celebrate the grace do what god has called you to do God is giving us wisdom tonight hallelujah never come into the presence of greatness empty-handed I'm teaching you one powerful law of honor please look I can I can get down on my knees and beg you if you want extraordinary success never make it a culture do it delightsomely do not cultivate the attitude of coming into the presence of a great man empty-handed if you do not have a seed look for opportunities to serve are you getting what i'm saying i never see a man of god empty-handed no matter what happens and i'm not talking about this kind of ridiculous seed that was talked about in malachi chapter one that people can't no no you don't bless a great man with leftovers you bless a great man honorably i'm teaching you principles that make for great men 
I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. Father, I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name. I never go to see my father or my mother empty-handed. Never. 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 It's, it's a taboo as far as I'm concerned. Never. I never go to greet and see an elderly person. If, if, even if I don't take a gift, then it means I'm going to send something. But many of us, we do not understand that these are little principles. This is how the kingdom is built. You neglect it at your detriment. I'm rounding up. There are two ways I taught you to receive from a great man. One is service and the other is seed. If you don't have money, go and look for the man of God's clothes. Say, Sam, just early in the morning, just say, Sam, I came to your house. Where are your clothes? Sam will say, no, say, kill me here bring it out and you carry a bucket and you are washing Hebrews 7 7 and without contradiction the lesser is blessed of the greater you see a woman you go to her house and say mommy I came to wash your plates today say no no my daughter there are no plates carry the ones that are clean say they are dusty soak them again Lord this is how I will have my home this is how I will be blessed the law of honor you can tap into anointings and leave the realm that you are now hallelujah praise the lord jesus now let me say something because i know that there are people who are ministers here and there are many who will be listening please listen to this never invite a man of god whether a music minister a worship minister for a meeting without intentionally planning to honor him you see a lot of people do this in the body of christ let me correct it now hallelujah this is an apostolic ministry we speak to the body of christ and i'm speaking to the body of christ he must be corrected never invite a man of god that you do not have capacity to bless his grace or his gift are you getting my point there are many people who want to bring every great man of god but they are not prepared. If I am going to bring Desmond as a professional decorator, for instance, I must have the ability to honor his grace. If I cannot, use what you have. Please, is somebody getting blessed? There are so many people, I want to invite this, I want to invite that. There are so many men of God that have been pained because people just invite them, come for a meeting, and they never make adequate arrangements. There are laws and principles in this ministry. There are very few men of God who have invited here. And I can tell you this with all humility. When we invite a man of God, we, we prepare as if it's marriage. Because if we think that grace is not enough to bless us, then we better not invite him. Are you getting my point? When we invite a man of God right from the junction, the protocol department is waiting for him. When he gets there, they pick him. There are people who invite a man of God. And it's when he comes, you go and you keep him standing and you are paying for his hotel room. He says, sorry, how much is this room? Is it double or single, standard or this thing? And the man is, you have been planning for a meeting for a long time. Are you getting my point? Now Pastor Williams is just standing. And you are wondering, or a man of God that you invite, you say, has he come? He's outside, you just say, sorry please stand up stand up keep these two seats sir you are welcome what are you doing you are not intentional about the spirit of excellence and now i know that many people have not been trained to recognize this but i want you to know you will never receive maximally from an anointing that you do not honor i have found myself teaching and pouring myself in meetings because of the way that i was honored they honored me from my arrival to my departure and i found out that there was an unusual flow of grace i i went the extra mile to have maybe meetings with leaders or people like that because of honor but there are meetings you go for you can't wait for the last session 
immediately he finishes you join he does everybody pack your load and let's leave this place never make your ministry like that there are four things that you must look at when you are inviting a man of god let me use the opportunity and say this number one his hospitality hospitality especially when you are it's okay if you are inviting a man of god that is within your region please say it because this has not been taught in the body of christ number one hospitality never carry a man of god and come and frustrate him in a place because you think you are invited no don't do that hospitality hallelujah prepare very well let the man of god eat well if he's fasting ask him don't assume don't say bring only dinner i already know this guy he's always fasting what if he's not fasting that day number two prepare to celebrate his grace publicly hallelujah prepare to celebrate his grace i'm teaching you how to receive graces there are places i've gone for once it would take god instructing me to go there again when god speaks then i go particularly just because i'm obeying the voice of god otherwise i will never go there out of personal comfort again no number three let there be the spirit of excellence in your organization excellence does not have to mean that you are expensive excellence just means the highest level of order let there be the highest level of order and then number four honor the man as much as possible let there be an honorarium honorarium simply means that a gift or whatever means of appreciating and celebrating his grace just like teachers you can never really reward mentors and men of god and great men make sure you never bring a man of god i remember one of my friends who went to preach somewhere they had been disturbing this guy and when he went to preach i'm being sincere with you <laughs> immediately he finished they, you know this kind of this kind of um these wire papers they just squeeze 500 naira, roll, roll it as if it's bribe, and just say, "May we thank you for your grace." Ah, bah. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not exaggerating. Now, imagine that that man of God has a wife. Are you getting my point? And now this man left his wife for three days. This is his job. This is where God blesses him, and he comes back after three days. Right? And she's happy. She welcomes him. And the man said, we came back from the vineyard of the Lord. We have done exploits for the kingdom. Blind eyes were open, you know, sick bodies. And then they just bring this PTA, you know, this PTA letter of primary school. Where they, they will leave dash and they put the amount. And say, honey, just to remind you that uh, Junior is going to school day after tomorrow. And the man of God becomes angry. He's frowning at everybody in the house because he is saving the, the sinners but his family is dying. Never bring a man of God that you are not your capacity. Don't say I can bring anybody. Let me tell you the mistake. There are many people who try to bring men of God and they overlook these things. And when it happens, it's like it endorses their error. And so they say, look, even so, so, so and so person we have brought him, talk more of you. You don't know the inconvenience that person went through. And he just did it for the sake of the gospel. By the grace of God, if you see us invite anybody in this house, I can tell you, at the level of exposure and excellence and finance and blessing that God has given us, we will honor and make sure that this man is blessed. Blessed enough that if we call him tomorrow, he will say, thank you, I'm coming. Everybody say the law of honor. Any anointing that you do not honor, you will never receive anything from. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the breakthrough or the key to your next level is hidden in an anointing that may not be so far from you. From scripture, our breakthrough is always closer to us than we can ever imagine. The problem is we keep looking far. 
that breakthrough may be your mother in the same house you've gone to every man of god and every prophet and every herbalist but your mother who has that anointing to set you free there are people who again and again they probably have not been healed because they have not honored what god is doing in this house we are going to pray these keys that i've shared with you will give you uncommon success you can see the book that i'm writing them this these are keys that I am applying in my own life. And those who have gone ahead of us, who found this ancient path, told us that this is the way. And we confirm by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that this is it. Are we together now? You obtain the grace that makes for abundance for the sake and the grace for wealth that works in this ministry forces you to love God while you are wealthy. If you receive a grace that makes you wealthy, and as you are rising in wealth, you are leaving God. That anointing did not come from this ministry. The grace for this ministry has been, it has been edited through a covenant to ensure that as men rise, their hearts also rise for God. Not the kind of nonsense money that makes you leave God. You don't honor anything that has to do with God again. No, it is as you prosper, even as your soul prospers. Is Babylon that gives wealth that prospers you and diminishes your soul. Watch this. So you receive this grace. And then the Holy Spirit finds out. Grace for what? Favor. Come. Watch this. Praise and worship. You got this one during praise and worship. You didn't even know why you felt like falling. You just thought that, ah, the song was so nice. Something had landed on your head. Are we together? Now. This is speed. Hold me now, my dear watch this this is what is happening in koinonia you are sitting down but you just know that there is a weight that glory something is coming on you you can't tell you are not even falling you are not shouting you will look at someone shouting and feel bad and feel like i i wish i'm the person falling whereas the holy ghost is doing very serious things and then access to the hearts of men this is your package for miracle service now you receive this watch this we now share the grace watch this watch this remember you travel from another nation the uk us kenya wherever and then you just came and at the end of the service satan can even fool you you are from kenya oh i see please sit down madam i see how it's a kenyan uh, god bless you now watch this you can receive this and while you receive it they will share the grace and you will still feel like nothing came on you but you see the exam is not marked in church. Go out. Listen. Please, Koinonia, understand what I teach you. And God is able. You came for a meeting and you carried this. In two days, someone who forgot you. No. Listen. He does not just remember. I've taught you this last week. A book is open in the realm of the spirit by reason of the grace that you carry watch this in one week a strange grace for illumination you think hold on you think it's the spirit of revelation it's not revelation it's speed it's just that speed demands revelation there are graces when you carry they call others too so that they will work well in your life and god is able God is able God is able there are people because of the graces you carry you will sustain the grace to fast for three days for one week remember that was a condition God gave you to allow your spirit allow him do certain things but the fortitude to fast that long was not there so the grace comes and while you wait upon the Lord ten years immediately is released within one month listen if all you see is just physical healings and deliverances you are not seeing well the major part of what calls listen 
one of the major reasons why god sends people from other nations and other places to this place is number one to be able to stand by the grace he has provided for to solve their problems but more than that to expose you to ancient mantles these are graces that were there by covenant listen there is nothing i carry that is as old as me everything i carry is older than me by far we are only stewards the grace predates us it's a relay we are running others ran it and god added on it and gave us to hold it for a generation to know the certainty of the things whereof you have been instructed please hear me if you believe what i share with you tonight you will marvel and you will wonder you can choose tonight to agree with god that every challenge except it does not have a name that in this place this night god will bring it down we are going to have like 10 minutes of serious prayer now listen please during that time of prayer forget about who is by your left and right forget about me just stay with god and pray passionately for the next 10 minutes lord i came for an encounter i came to receive healing i came to receive deliverance but i came to also attach myself to covenants i came by the spirit to receive graces outside inside online lift your voice and pray be restoration please bring them out quickly 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 let's save time please in the break it take it to Sheila Qatar restoration now I speak it by the spirit the power of God is still coming on people recover recover by the spirit recover I stretch my hands recover by the power of prophecy recover Recover years lost. Recover opportunities. A Paris Kebarashanda la Katariata. Recover in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare God is bringing recovery. Let me tell you, you will marvel and wonder that the things you thought has left you, you are about to find it waiting for you in your tomorrow. I speak to you, may that grace come upon you now again. Recovery. Recovery, recovery, Shamana Katabadakata, restoration. I want to take authority over the spirit of delay. I'm seeing many people, your feet is chained in the spirit. You want to make progress, but you cannot make progress. Fire is falling from heaven now. I decree and declare inside, outside, all the overflows. Anyone under the sound of my voice who is under the influence of the spirit of delay at the count of three may fire from heaven fall upon those chains one two three i break those chains now be free now from delay be free now be free now be free now, be free now. I will hasten my word to perform it. I will not just perform it. I will give speed to my word. The word is quick and powerful. I declare again, any family here, any individual under the yoke of delay, I speak to you by the spirit. That yoke is broken now. That yoke is broken now. broken by the spirit hallelujah now i want to pray please listen i have prayed this prayer and for those of you who have missed it in time past may god grant you the grace to receive it now listen truly speaking 
there is a grace for speed please hear me a man's lifetime cannot allow the fullness of the purposes of God to be birthed some of you gave your life to Christ late already in life it's not enough to rebuke delay you must obtain the grace for speed and watch this I'm about to pray for people now and that anointing is coming on people as usual you find people running by the spirit but I need to release that anointing father I stand under heaven in this miracle service there are people who have traveled from several nations and several territories at the count of three for you and for your family that dimension of speed where 10 years can be put in one year I declare right now let it come upon you one two three take that grace now take that grace now speed Parush Kabarakata speed career speed I give speed to your life speed to ministry receive that grace right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now speed hello madonna hallelujah mommy please look at me ma don't be embarrassed i don't know you but i'm seeing strong witchcraft over your family where are you coming from madam madam i'm looking at you i'm seeing river state where are you from states. Huh? states river state yes sir the lord says i should tell you that from this night things will change in your life she's your mother help that woman please i'm looking at the lord in the spirit i'm putting my hand inside a river and i'm bringing something out and the lord says the destiny of this family in the name of jesus that's the daughter i command by the spirit every planting that is not of the lord i overturn and i uproot now in the name of jesus christ who is naomi i'm hearing a name naomi we have to hurry up i want to pray for the sick naomi Hello, Kim Madonna. Ah, hello. The Naomi I'm talking about is outside. Where are you coming from? Come, stand. Your name is not Naomi. Is your name Naomi? What's your name? Come, stand. Where are you coming from, my dear? UK. From where? I want to pray for you. Your name is Naomi. Come and stand. We have to hurry up. Hold on. I cancel CS. I, Madam, look at me. I stretch my hands now. I cancel CS. By the spirit of the living God. And I decree and declare. Like the Hebrew women, you will give birth. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying it again. I correct what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. This is what doctors say. Baby is preached. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I correct it now. May you give birth normally like the Hebrew women. In Jesus name. Let me pray. Are you married? You are backing a baby where is the baby i'm looking at you in a vision that's why i'm saying oh, how can this you know i'm saying you came to koinonia you are backing a baby outside this is the vision I'm... you are not getting what i'm saying is this you were backing this baby when i mentioned your case Huh? Yes, were you backing a baby yes, that's why I'm saying are you married because you look too small to be a married woman this is the real person I want to pray for bring this little baby God is I don't know whose child is this your child but God this lady you see is going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of God she looks like a little girl in the name of Jesus what's her name Nicole, Nicole. 
she may not know what we are doing but we stand in the presence of the people of God we anoint this lady may she become a Deborah to her generation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ my dear let me pray for you where are you from Kogi State I want to pray for you ah. immediately she mentioned Kogi State I saw what I used to see now now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the power of God going to Kogi State Kogi State I'm praying now it's a sign and wonder every time I see that if you are from that locality the power of God comes on you immediately in the name of Jesus I command witchcraft associated with that territory even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captive shall be delivered Hallelujah. Who is Magdalene? Magdalene, my dear, come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I anoint you. There is grace. You look young, but you are going to be a mother to men. This is what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord anoint you and make it so. My dear, I rebuke the hand of witchcraft now. Release her. I'm seeing chains on you. I declare by the Spirit, release this lady now. I'm about to minister deliverance shortly. Release her now. In the name of Jesus. Please bring someone in overflow too now. A lady. The power of God is coming upon that lady. Now as I speak, overflow too. Mighty fire of God is coming. Please bring her quickly. We have to save time. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Come, my dear. The grace that will want to make married men disturb you. Look at me. I come against that spirit now. Not only you. There are five other people I'm seeing. I don't know where they are. But in Jesus' name, there is a, like, like, a, like an, almost like an evil anointing that makes only married people to look for you. Parus kamana hashileketa. In the name of Jesus, by the God of heaven, I lift that negative thing off your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I hear the name Magdalene. I don't know if Magdalene, I want to pray very quickly. We have to pray for the sick. You are the covenant keeping God. you can Jesus. I decree and declare by the spirit of the living God I'm seeing your feet in mud in the name of Jesus I lift you out of this tragedy by the power of the Holy Spirit and I speak to this lady I'm seeing this lady but all I'm seeing is snakes completely I declare be free now by the spirit of the living God the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let me pray for you, my dear. Grace for you. The favor that is on your life, I command it to start speaking. It will not only be a name that is on you. It will speak right now in Jesus' name. Your sister, your name is Magdalene. Come, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you. Look at me. The Lord is taking away shame and reproach from your life. These two things. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Please stand up. I speak to you by the God of heaven. The month of November, a big miracle is coming to your life. A big miracle. I lay my hands upon you 
and I declare in the name of Jesus be free right now why is this girl here this Magdalene come my dear I pray for you place your hand on your head I declare oh God let this chain be taken now I'm seeing a chain on this girl's head be removed now be removed this like the devil wanting to just bring this lady under captivity I remove it right now in the name of Jesus Christ somebody lay your hands on her so anybody just touch her release her now by the Spirit of God there's no place for you take everything that belongs to her restore it and go now now please listen I want to minister deliverance please believe it you may not know the woman from Kenya come it's time for God to change your life please stand up when did you come here uh, yesterday yesterday yes. you came here God is about to turn your life around Amen. Glory. you are still coming and you are coming with four people the next time you are coming Amen. Thank you, Jesus. madam what do you do what do you do? I'm a commissioner for human rights. Commissioner for human rights yes. in Nairobi. Yes. In, in two weeks, I'm going to be in your nation. I would like to see you in your nation. There is a reason why I'm talking. I'm not seeing you alone. I'm seeing four other people yes. that the Lord wants me to pray for. Okay. But I want to pray for you, madam, because I don't know if you believe it or not. You have a political destiny. As you are like this looking at me you have a political destiny in Kenya and God by his spirit is going to make this happen but another thing is there is also the call of God upon your life you are a woman that love God there is is starting like an intercessory grace and a prophetic grace but you will get to a point where among the graces God will give you is the grace to pray for barren women notice this grace God is going to bring this grace upon you God, I'm also seeing you build a charity foundation. There is going to be a mighty humanitarian foundation that I see you build. I'm seeing foodstuff and I'm seeing different things. First, it will have to do with young girls, people who have been abused and so on. But I see it not only that, I see women too. Women, God is going to increase your influence. I lay my hands upon you and I declare by the Spirit, carry this grace. Go to Kenya with it, go and excel. I command the two lift gates of Nairobi and the entire Kenya to be open for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ go with this anointing go and prosper may the Lord multiply your political career and may the Lord prepare you for the mighty ministerial assignment he has for you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hallelujah praise the Lord an angel of the Lord is standing here someone will shout here under a strong anointing I just saw that grace I don't know first I think until the shout happens I know why God just from here right to the back there is an anointing I just saw a, a very mighty manifestation of the power of God here now listen whether you know it or not if there is anything influencing your, your destiny that is not of the Christ is about to give way right now <laughs> hallelujah at the count of three hear me whether you are inside outside or following online I want you to shout that name Jesus with understanding it's not just a chant my Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower not a weak tower the righteous run it to it and they are saved I want to pray for you I know you've shouted in other months but great deliverance great deliverance is about to come your way father i pray that every spirit in this place that does not name the name of the christ that is sitting on the destinies of men and women manipulating their results i stand and call upon the god of jeshurun the one that rides upon the wings and i declare let there be deliverance at the count of three shout that name jesus 
One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Please bring them out. Be free now. Overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three. All the extension online. I declare be free now from ancestry. Be free from foundation. Be free from witchcraft. Bring them out. Haru Salikata. Embrekete Barata. Operations of darkness. I'm seeing a womb. Like the drawing of a woman's womb. And I'm seeing it close. It doesn't just mean physical barrenness. It means a spirit that is closing the door of results. Many people cannot get results. But right now that door is about to open. And I stand by the God of heaven. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Everyone's destiny that has been closed. So that it will not find manifestation. At the count of three. Let it be open. One. Two. Three. Be open now. 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 Be open now.
as you are showing me at the count of three may that grace rest upon you one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now a strength grace for abundance receive supplies from heaven supplies by the spirit let things walk in a way that will surprise you. I command things to walk in a way that will marvel you. mighty God a few minutes we are going to pray for the sick now now please listen I'm only going to do this for this overflow and overflow one that's not to mean I'm neglecting the remaining it's just a revelation that God is giving me there are two angels standing by my left and my right and every time I see this God wants me to move listen hear me except God is not God when I pass any road where you are anything that does not name the name of the Christ and any dimension that is not of God in your life it must give way now I only do this for this and overflow one afterwards we are going to pray for the sick please I want you to just believe I don't know why God does these things but I want you to believe that he is mighty and that he will glorify himself father in the name of Jesus Christ glorify yourself change everything that needs to be changed many of you will be receiving impartations that will shift you to dimensions I want you to believe it I will pray not everywhere but there are a few people I'm seeing this happen by the Spirit Hali Shalatos Pragados Krekete Barakushla I shift you in the Spirit every limitation that does not name the name of Christ I'm praying mantles anointings by the Spirit coming on people right now let that presence of God shift you to dimension in the name of Jesus dimension I'm seeing a chain around here I break that chain now I'm seeing a chain around here let that chain be broken now let that chain be broken now let that chain be broken now break now break now break now Chains be broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, God is turning your life around. Where are you coming from? Kaduna State. In the name of Jesus. Break now. In the name of Jesus. Be free now from everything that is not of God. Be free now. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Parush Halikatosh. I break it now. 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 By the spirit of the living God. I break it now. Mama, I break it now. I break it now. Somebody, I'm sensing an evil spirit just around here. I come against you now. I take authority over that influence. You must go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Overflow one, lift your voice and pray in the spirit. Harusa Zigadesh. 
Now listen. Please be your brother's keeper. You don't have to touch me. Please be your brother's keeper so you don't enjoy yourself. But as I pass here, anything that is not of God is about to give way right now. Thank you, Jesus. Go now. Let it go now. Let it go now. Let it go now. All that I come against you now. In Release them now, release them now, release them now, release them now. I'm seeing what looks like an altar right here. Release them now in the name of Jesus. Harusa Sikete, be free now, be free now, be free now, be free now. The spirit of delay right here is breaking, breaking over someone's family. Be broken now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be broken now. Be broken now. Beauty and glory to your life. In the name of Jesus. Now watch this. Listen. Hold on, please. Hold on, please. I'm standing here and I'm seeing who is Rebecca. Rebecca. They call you Becky. Rebecca. Just not inside. Here you are. What's your name? Rebecca. Don't worry, it's okay. What's your name? Don't just come out if in the name of Jesus Christ, come. I end oppression now over your life and your family. Oh, you, my dear, your name is Rebecca. Where are you from? You are from are you from Makodi? Benway State. In the name of Jesus. I keep seeing this spirit every time I pray for people. That thing they call Aleku A L something K U. In the name of Jesus, I cast that spirit by the God of heaven. If there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of that spirit, you are from that region, I stand by the God of heaven. Let it come to an end now. Help them please. Let it come to an end now. In the name of Jesus. Hold on please. Right here. There is a gentle man who will be mightily used by God. I just saw a strong mantle from my head resting on someone. I stretch my hands. Lord, I don't know where they are. Paruska Badu Let that grace come on you now. Strange mantle, prayer fire, word fire, illumination in the spirit. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. standing here and I'm seeing a family with a yoke of marital delay I'm seeing something that looks like an arrow just coming from heaven right now let deliverance come now let it come now I'm still moving the hand of God is coming to people right now thank you Jesus thank you Jesus please you don't have to touch me in the name of Jesus right here financial stagnation comes to an end an anointing is coming on someone for your family financial stagnation let it be over now my dear be free now out now someone here the power of God is coming on that person be free now free from everything that is not of God New dimension, new dimensions. I'm seeing an anointing here. New dimension. The old story must leave you. That's what God is saying. I'm prophesying to someone here. The old story must leave you. The old is gone so that the new will come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is the woman? Wait, hold on, please. I held someone's hand now. Holding a photo of a sick patient. Where is he? Come. Who is this? Where is he? He's in China. What's wrong with him? He's depressed now. If I don't pray for him, I'm seeing him inside a coffin. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Let there be deliverance for him now. What's his name? 
Ibrahim, this is not only something affecting him. This is something that is influencing the entire family. But I stand by the God of heaven and I set you free. In the name of Jesus, be completely free. And I speak to him, Ibrahim, may the power of God touch you and perfect you now and perfect you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the sick. My friend, this man looking at me, come. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kogi State. What do you do? Are you a man of God? You came here trusting God for fresh fire. Come. You are about to receive it because I'm seeing you from Kogi State. You, where is your church? Look at me, sir. Where You have a church? You are under a church. Hmm. A time will come God will give you your own work. Now God is preparing you. Be faithful. You will go, but now is not the time. You live now, you will suffer for nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let sincere people come and push you out of the will of God. But surely a time is coming and you will walk in very strange dimensions of the anointing. Father, I lay my hands upon this man. Let his dealings with the spirit progress. In the name of Jesus. Not only an impartation, a dealing that produces real power in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This lady with green, this lady, you, come. The Lord is about to turn your life around in a way that will surprise you. Two things will happen to you. Number one, I'm seeing restoration. God is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration. Number two, I'm seeing the gift of men. Please do listen to my message. Help them on the gift of men. God is bringing people strangely to lift you. I lay my hands upon you and I pray, may this grace be effectual. Carry that grace right now. And you will start having visions. Visions. God is going to start giving you dreams and he will start giving you visions. In the name of Jesus. This is very strange what I'm seeing. Except that I saw it, I will not say it. Stop running away from the call. You are a man of God's wife. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying what does not make sense. Stop running from the call. You are the wife of a man of God, a minister of the gospel. The Lord will bring performance to his word. This thing I tell you is a strange mystery, the way God works. But in the name of Jesus, I place the word of God upon that prophecy. It's time for you to not fight the will of God. It's time for you to relinquish your own will in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray just one prayer point. The Lord is asking me, immediately we do that, we'll pray for the sick and we'll start submitting our request. Where is that young lady that came out with one mama while I was praying for her? There's a young lady that was wearing glasses. I don't, if, if you are here, you are the one. What do you do? You are going to be very wealthy. Come. Are you a lawyer? Huh? This is this your mother? Where are you coming from, madam? Okay, you are the reverse woman. This lady you see is going to be extremely wealthy. Because I'm seeing you a lawyer. And you are going to, you, I don't know what area of law you are going to specialize, but I'm seeing you sitting with so many business people. This is a lot of business people. Signing contracts, helping people to process a lot of things. Millions, huh? That's what? That's where she is right now. Doing some things abroad. She's what? That's what she's doing right now, where she works. That's what she's doing now. Right now, where she works. Because I'm seeing God will just cause them to like her. It's not every man that is a foolish and a stupid man. There are people who are out to genuinely bless. Yes, sir. And I pray for your daughter and I connect her by the Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. she will find these people. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, she will shift her to another dimension. Amen. Mama, God is saying I should tell you, forgive. Does it make sense to you? Yes, my husband also is a lawyer. But... Your husband is a lawyer? Yes, but... What was the issue? Nothing is happening. 
don't worry ma do you know why you fell under the anointing you fell on behalf of me, all the troubles in your it wasn't just your personal falling alone there are times that you fall representing all of these troubles because this is not what i'm even saying god is saying i should tell you to forgive forgiveness now it doesn't make sense and god has not given me an interpretation but let me tell you this you see look up the average person seated here has been hurt by someone whether friends are we together uncles relatives people you trusted and they betrayed you let me tell you something about unforgiveness unforgiveness is a terrible spirit is one of the master secrets to delay unforgiveness it will keep you in one place forever you are there angry and annoyed and most of what you'll be angry about is legitimate however you see forgiveness is a type of giving understand this forgiveness is still the, the giving grace that helps men to forgive the only thing with forgiveness is that you give in advance are we together the highest form of forgiveness is tolerance where you know it will happen again and you build a system around it to not hurt you we live in a society that is so hot conscious this one hurt me this one did this there are too many things that can create offense the bible says in nothing should you be offended it's a choice mama in the name of jesus please don't cry i don't know what it is and why you are crying but my dear comfort your mother after the prayer eh? in the name of jesus what is before you is greater than anything that has caused you pain and in the name of jesus forgive in the name of jesus forgive i also pray for someone here do you know there are many couples that have not been able to forgive one another in marriages it can last for 10 years 20 years same room same bed but that bitterness especially for the men we don't know that this might be the secret the bible says for dishonoring your wife the consequence is that your heavens will be closed it's not a lie that's why you see men struggle and struggle and simple things become hard because of the propensity for bitterness make up your mind in this miracle service that you will let go and not only forgive but tolerate i wish i can tell you there are some things your loved ones are doing that they will never do again but they will do it every time a door is about to open here offense comes it's a choice i will not be offended are we together father we pray for our daddy in the name of jesus the kind of miracle that god will do in the life of this man let it be so powerful that everybody around will know that this is the doing of the lord i decree it and i establish it in the name of jesus christ there is a gentleman here we are going to pray goodness you see how time just runs there is a gentleman here you are a member of mountain of fire where are you mountain of fire you are a serious brother mountain of fire now please I'm, I'm not just saying you attend don't listen to instructions please right mfm my friend you are serious you come from where mfm kano mfm kano how about yes, you Calabar. mfm calabar how about you lagos lagos i want to pray i'm not saying if you are from mfm just come out like that they are particular people it doesn't matter what denomination you are from once you are here huh this is a universal this is a master key it will complement on what every grace and every man and woman of god is doing but i want to pray for you my friend i i'm going i'm first going to pray for you where are you from i'm from a quiet bomb state there is serious witchcraft sitting on your destiny yes, i hope sir. you are not embarrassed yes sir yes huh? sir you need help you have prayed stand up please you are a prayer warrior you can pray you can do fasting huh sometimes you just need a grace to help you you hear what i tell you i'm going to pray for you if i don't pray for you i'm seeing the spirit of death start sweeping people in your family like that like play like play until he starts killing people but let me tell you don't despise yourself you need a lot of mentorship but you are going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of god this brother you see is very serious with god huh 
very serious with God. You just need the right support, impartations, and a mentorship system that makes for balance in your life. Hold my hand. Father, what's your name? Huh? Anthony. Tony, in the name of Jesus, everything that represents witchcraft, I join my faith with that of your father and your leader, Dr. Daniel Odikoya, and I decree in the name of Jesus, be free now. I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of death far from your dwelling. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. Who is looking for a job? Uh -uh, I'm not saying, I'm not on employment. I'm talking to these guys. That I, of course, I know that people are trusting God for jobs. Where did you apply? Huh? Kaduna State Civil Service. The Lord says, I should pray for you that they will give you. Do I know you applied for a job? Stand up. prophecy is powerful in a moment God can just change things like that my dear let me tell you this it's not even the issue of Kaduna State Civil Service alone huh? God is going to give you unusual influence it will marvel you are we together now hold my hands you believe what i'm telling you yes father confirm your word in a way that will surprise this lady let that rejected stone in the name of jesus become the chief cornerstone receive of that grace in the name of jesus i speak it so i make it so i establish it by the power of prophecy let me pray for you gentlemen i don't know if it's you or someone related to you but there's someone god is giving a job someone looking for a job but i want to pray for you father you called out the gentlemen from MFM Kano and the remaining places. I decree and declare by the God of heaven that everything that represents witchcraft in your life, let it give way now. In the name of Jesus, let it give way now. Even by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is showing me a lady. I'm not going to ask you to come. God bless you. But I'm lifting up my hand. I'm seeing... You know how you cover a bride when you are about to marry before they remove that thing from her face. This is what I'm seeing. But that one is not pride of wedding. This is evil. Covering your entire, a human being with almost no head. Huh? And the Lord is saying, I should pray that that veil be torn. I don't know who that person is. But right now, the power of God is going. There, there, there are many of you I perceive. In the name of Jesus, that veil that has covered you so that no good thing finds you by the god of heaven and in the name of jesus the christ of god i declare that fail turn into pieces now turn into pieces now inside outside online turn into pieces now the last case i attend to and then we'll begin to pray for the sick nothing ever lasts in your hand this is the problem you are trusting God for. In fact, it's one of your requests. Nothing, many good things continue to happen, but they never last. If a, if a season of open door comes, three, four months, sometimes men can come into your life or women can come into your life and after two, three months, for reasons you cannot explain, you have never sustained any blessing for up to two years. As it comes, you will see it. Sometimes you will go to bed in the night and you will have a dream. You may see someone come maybe to molest you or to attempt to have an affair with you. This is what I'm seeing. The moment that thing happens, it will not be up to one month and every good thing goes down. But I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, whoever belongs to this category, every attachment you have with spirits that are not of the Christ, that warrant visitations in the night to molest and oppress you and spy into your liberty I declare by the Spirit of God be free now be free now help them please be free now My 
my dear come you come hold my hands it's your it's a new season for you by the anointing of the holy ghost step into a new season i've touched you i saw you climbing a ladder in the spirit i release you into that dimension in the name of jesus christ we have to hurry up and pray for the sick now now please watch this this lady jumping shame and reproach i call it by his name and i command it to leave you now shame and reproach to leave you and let you go in the name of jesus someone will run by the anointing to me don't stop the person just hold the person this is what i'm seeing by the spirit this is a ministry of signs and wonders why these things i'm not saying to run consciously i'll send you back this is by the anointing please there is order in the house of god order in the church are we together the the hand of god now as i speak is coming upon you my soul longs and even thirst for you my heart and my flesh cries out for the living God, for the living God. Incline your ears with trembling and tears of yearning. To the throne of grace, to seek your faith, I'm burning, longing for you. I declare to all of you that came out by the Spirit, I shift you, go forward now. So we would entreat you to subscribe. Go forward now. The power that holds you down. I take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Go forward now. I release your families to go forward now. In the name of Jesus. Now please hear me. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now listen. For those who will be laying hands on you. Don't think that because it is not Joshua Selman laying hands on you. Remember I told you that there is a grace that everyone who is called to serve in this ministry and designated and mandated carries that grace we're about to pray for the sick now now listen please there are three conditions that i will want to minister lay hands on the people myself remember don't tell lies you cannot come to the truth lying are we together don't insist that i just want joshua selman to touch that's not the idea aside from those who are in the main auditorium that i request to come out if you're trusting god for a miracle if you are here and you are suffering from cancer number one number two you are suffering from hiv number three you are suffering from barrenness it doesn't matter what overflow you are in if you have any of these three cases please with those who are in the main auditorium i want you to join them and come otherwise please all the overflows move to your projector screen and stand there all as directed by the ushers or protocol anyone trusting god for to be prayed for for healing right now i want you to make your way to the front quickly and then in addition to that the three cases i've mentioned you come into the main auditorium and join please quickly we have to hurry up Overflow one, please walk to your projector stand. Overflow two, I don't know from where now. As directed, walk to your projector stand. Overflow three, walk to your projector stand. Uh, my God, I don't know if there's overflow two B. Then just walk as you are directed. Somebody should stand in front of them and direct them appropriately, please. Overflow four. Um, also just move to your projector stand or as directed 
those online following from whatever nation of the world just connect by faith as we pray hallelujah now please watch this our time is gone and we're going to be doing this very fast listen please if you are here and you're yet to write your prayer request per adventure you're coming for the first time and you need an opportunity to write your prayer request please someone help them with a piece of paper or whatever it is that you will need everyone you can pen down your prayer request now when you're done please lift it and there will be ushers PR help them protocol help them whoever needs to help them let's make it very fast overflow one two three those online I believe that theirs has also been collated we're going to have everything now so that as soon as we're done we'll pray for the request the moment you are done please wave it or pass it to the person um, at the aisle where it can be picked give them room to write if you need a piece of paper you can help your friend or wave your hand and righteousness Lord you reign King of lands You are the ancient of days Lord you reign Help me We cry holy Holy Now Let your hallelujah praise the lord thank god we have some hands tonight um pastor jakes and Ejimi will do overflow three since there will be several people there overflow three they'll be ministering to overflow three benga will go to overflow one promise overflow one two um kenny overflow two two a now uh, two a or two b praise the lord isaac overflow to be praise the lord ima overflow overflow what now what is left huh overflow the last overflow whether overflow four okay no overflow to be go to overflow four praise the lord it will have to be a very quick walk because there are several people I'll minister to the people here praise the Lord now please listen please except they want to talk to you prophetically don't worry listen just a touch is all that you need and I want you to believe by faith as soon as they touch you do what you couldn't do head back to your seat unfortunately because of the limited time we may not have time to take testimonies as you would have seen in many of my external ministrations for two reasons one this is a miracle service dedicated to ministering to people if we we'll pray and say be, if you are healed come out it will take a lot of time we don't have that luxury of time praise the lord so we are doing three things at the same time one we are praying for the sick has promised prom okay pastor alpha oh uh who is in overflow one only you two of you okay pastor alpha join them in overflow three Pastor Femi, aha, uh -huh, Pastor Femi should go to, did I give you a place? Pastor Femi, join um, Overflow 2. 2B, two okay, with, with Ima now. 2B or 4. You are in 2, only you. Okay, so um, Femi, please join him in Overflow 4. Overflow 4. 
praise the Lord just direct them father in the name of Jesus we stand by this corporate grace and we declare let there be miracles right now by the power of the Holy Spirit please write your requests believing the worship team will lead us through a time of worship while we are doing this it will be very fast afterwards I will just pray and prophesy to everyone and then we'll try to tie it up tonight but whilst you are sitting make sure you connect by faith you can involve your loved ones let them know that God is moving right now he's blessing people Lord we give you all the praise let there be great miracles by the Spirit of God in Jesus name I pray praise the Lord thank you for your patience please rise up on your feet if they are still praying for you where wherever whatever overflow don't worry just just hang on there please stretch your hands to this request as we pray I'd like you to open your mouth and begin to declare by the Spirit unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come please lift your voice everyone let's have all the requests here please if there are people who are yet to submit I'd like you to stretch your hands to these requests as you declare that these Egyptians that I see today, I see no more forever. Lord, turn impossible situations around in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus release miracles release solutions break yokes oh God turn around family situations for your name's sake reveal callings reveal destinies let your people find purpose let your people find direction make sure you are praying Lord stay the power of darkness over the requests of your people in the name of Jesus hallelujah Please agree with me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Louder, amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, tonight we come to you, the God that can answer prayers. And Lord, I decree, standing in the presence of your people, thousands of people have submitted their requests, a representation of their expectations, their pain their disappointments their anticipations lord i decree and declare that every spirit that is back of these problems we declare lose your grip now lose your grip now number two i declare that every grace that needs to be released towards you for these requests to be granted by the message of the God of heaven, we decree and declare by faith we channel these graces to you. Every human agent whose mind needs to be touched by God to allow these requests to be answered, in the name of Jesus, we call on the Father of spirits to touch them on that wise. And every request that remains because of the hardness of the hearts of men we break that hardness now Amen. father answer speedily Amen. lord answer speedily Amen. turn situations around Amen. every death sentence represented in this request we declare that death sentence is cancelled in the name of jesus and so father we give you praise because we declare by faith the very faith of the son of god that these requests are met in jesus name as i stand upon these requests i declare by the spirit of faith 
that in the mighty name of Jesus that which God has done now remains permanent in Jesus name and I prophesy over you by the God of heaven the Egyptians that you see today that pursued you from Egypt to the Red Sea and beyond I declare by the Spirit you will see them no more forever no matter how long you have been in Egypt if you go out of Egypt no going back in the name of Jesus between now and the next three weeks may the God of heaven in the name of Jesus 21 days was the maximum time of contention in the realm of the spirit I decree and declare it will not exceed three weeks and every request that has been released already but has been hijacked by men and systems I mount pressure on those men and systems to allow this request manifest I mount pressure on those systems allow this request manifest let it be so in the name of Jesus give Jesus praise hallelujah I'm going to declare the last prophetic word over everyone here. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive. Don't be careless about it. Hallelujah. Please, they can come and pick it. I believe in the power of prophecy. The spoken word is also creative. It can make things happen. It not only reveals what will happen, it makes things that has no business happening to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare over you, please hear me by the God of heaven every door that has been closed over your destiny I stand here as the servant of the living God I force that door to open now everyone trusting God for a job a meaningful job not a nonsense job that does not have honor I pray now a job that will not take your relationship away from God a job that will not make you compromise receive that job in the name of Jesus I pray for your spiritual life the kind of fire that you need on your prayer life in this season I speak over you receive fresh fire access to revelation access to light receive it in Jesus name every helper of your destiny who must show up in this season to make the word of God to come to pass I command them to appear now I preached last week on the book of remembrance let me pray that prayer in the name of Jesus I open the book both in the heavens and in the earth and I declare every good thing you have done to any man on earth I compel remembrance now I compel remembrance now every kind of barrenness biological barrenness financial barrenness career barrenness ministerial barrenness i cause it now and i command it to leave you let me pray over the spirit of death any family here appointed unto death i speak by the god of heaven be free now number two every family appointed unto hardship that you will never see the goodness and the salvation of the Lord I cancel that pronouncement now listen by the blood of the eternal covenant in the name of Jesus I cause every foundational issue that causes hardship and pain and retrogression over your life now
the kind of honor you have never seen in your life i speak to you by the spirit step into it let me pray for favor i will never stop praying this prayer till you carry it bodily access to the hearts of kings access to the resources of kings receive it now by favor restoration of visions dreams listen there are many of you who used to have dreams and encounters nothing crosses over you without your eyes seeing it but it looks like you are becoming like eli your eyes becoming dim i pray for you i fan back your vision to flames in the name of jesus every pattern that is in any family you see it in your siblings you see it in your life i declare let it be broken now anyone in ministry here please hear me i speak to you as you return back to your various stations let fire fall upon your altar I pray for everyone in business dying business dead business let it come back to life now please don't just say amen believe creation is happening everything God showed you from the beginning of this year and told you should have entered your hand by now but the devil is adding 30 extra years to your 400 years i push you by prophecy in the name of jesus christ hear me i speak to you by the god of heaven any man that fights you goes down instantly And anyone holding what is yours and has vowed not to release it in the name of Jesus may God humble the pride of wicked men anyone who has said over my dead body for this family to move may God answer their prayers I open the door of favor towards every family here in the name of Jesus all our ladies and all the women that are due to give birth I declare give birth like the Hebrew women in the name of Jesus let me pray for all the gentlemen our time is gone but I must pray for you the grace that establishes a man early may that grace rest on you for those of you who are still 30 years 35 40 50 still loitering your parents house eating your mother's food not just as honor but as a necessity in the name of Jesus by the God who is the lifter of men I declare may that reproach live your life now anyone here called barren in Jesus name by November miracle service you come here pregnant already let me pray for every ministry here every prayer group every platform intercessory groups churches fresh grace for you in the name of Jesus Christ the final prayer I'm going to pray for you honor is what makes men reward you listen 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 honor is the ability to discern the ability to celebrate and the ability to reward men for their uniqueness 
you can be as anointed as anything but when honor is not on you men will only just celebrate you from afar but you will never live a rewarded life i pray the prayer that jabez cried unto god for the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren i pray for you everywhere you find yourself rise above your contemporaries let me pray the last prayer point don't say it's not important there are people here your life is not advancing the kingdom in any way this is not altar call this prayer for you to settle down and let your life advance as far as God is concerned you are time on earth if your life does not find a space to advance the kingdom not your work not your service not your worship it looks like nothing about your life there is no kingdom come represented in your life you are just living for yourself hand to mouth to marry have children maybe go to school get a job i redirect your focus now in the name of jesus christ may your life and everything involved around it cause the kingdom the power and the glory of god to be manifest in the name of jesus and every other request here whether mentioned or not i stand in agreement with you in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god receive it as a testimony in the next one minute whether you are in overflow one two three or here you are yet to make jesus lord of your life genuinely please no movement and or you are saying apostle i've handed my life over to jesus but for some reason things have just scattered around my life and i don't seem to gain any footing and bearing and i want to make my way right with god please whether you are in overflow one overflow two the main auditorium aside from overflow three please i'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here right now koinonia celebrate them don't wait for anyone to come first quickly if you're coming please come and stand come and stand apostle i'm not sure if i'm saved or not join them quickly join them quickly koinonia is this the best you can do join them quickly scripture says you must be born again if you're coming from outside please make it snappy make it as fast as possible hallelujah i salute every one of you here please lift your right hand believe that jesus is here standing before you gentlemen and ladies please join them very quickly if you're coming please come quickly 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 you're coming come very quickly thank you now say this after me say it passionately say it truthfully believing that jesus is here and he will honor your confession of faith say after me lord jesus tonight i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification tonight I ask you to be my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that from tonight and forever, I move forward ever, backward never these three ladies didn't pray the prayer somebody direct them and let them pray that prayer the prayer is already finished you this yellow girl and those two those my sisters or shall any of you are you not christians direct them someone pray the prayer with them in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare right now begin to walk in victory in jesus name i introduce you to the ministry of the holy spirit you will know him you will walk in his ways you will command strange results in your life in the name of jesus christ i call you tonight the righteousness of god 
I call you that you are part of the family of heaven in the name of Jesus all of the people who are just coming you're welcome God bless you just join that group that they are praying with and just pray the prayer that they lead you to pray in the name of Jesus Christ Lord Jesus thank you for these precious ones that you died for I decree and declare that tonight you receive by faith the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness and I declare that you reign in life go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name I pray amen and amen God bless you all of you in concert I want you to follow the lady smiling at you with her hands lifted everyone please follow her and um, they will direct you to a few people to just follow you or praise the Lord dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus I'll see you again Bye.